Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Genki One Lesson 8 Tokini Andy live stream. Today, we're going to be covering short forms in Japanese, in particular the negative short form, informal speech in general in Japanese, and ways you can use it to say things like, I think, they said, please don't, also nominalizing sentences so that you can sort of uh, modify them and work with them like you would a noun, the subject particle ga, and something or nothing in Japanese. But before we get into that, I just want to talk to you quickly about some new features here in Tokini Andy. First one is that there is now membership available here. If you click the join button down at the bottom of the screen, there's now Tokini Senpuki and Tokini Supa Senpuki. Senpuki get these little badges next to their name each month they're a member, as well as shout outs and videos like the ones you just saw below. Uh, Senpuki get early access to videos as well as everything before. So, also, of course, there's the Tokini ND Patreon with two different levels where you can receive um, videos like textbook practice videos from the Genki textbook, listening and shadowing videos that Yuki and I make, and vocabulary practice videos, and Yuki reading graded readers along with you. As well as some other things like these cool pin badges that Yuki is making right now, which is a special offer that's available until the end of this month. We've got these bad boys right here, Ando-san themed pin badges. And uh, anyone that joins this month to the Tokini Saint tier will be receiving one of those in the mail, no matter where you are at in the world. So that's some exciting stuff happening here at Tokini Andy. Um, yeah. So before we actually get started, just want to say hello to everyone who is in chat. Let's see who we've got here tonight. We've got Aubergine Archer, Hayden Zinner, Lena, Patrick, RT Person, Yu, Akiyama. C. Anthonym, Swag Place, Danny Little, and Yuki A. Chick, as well as a bunch of other people who were speaking earlier, but for some reason they don't, don't show up on the participants list. We've also got Wanna Knit, Swag Place, Danny Little. Uh, who else did I miss? I missed some other people. Uh, ah, Zyren. He's got that little cool, uh, the cool membership badge right next to his name. So check that out if you want to see what those look like. Also, by the way, there's, um, there's custom emoji available for the chat in the membership. And we're working on a competition to make those emoji over in the Discord. So if you aren't in the Discord, check that out as well. Also, hello, Kayan and Miros and did I miss someone else? Lynn and Carpe Diem and Dani and mm, scrolling way back up. Ah, Thomas. Uh, I think he's he's gone now. But if you watch this later in three lessons when you're done with lesson five, hello to you too. Meng and Chris Lane and Radclaw. Good evening to everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful night. And thank you to all my patrons and friends who are here tonight. Oh, we've also got down here a few more people have joined. Kason, Kim Garza, Diglitz, Sibonga Selena, Tara Angel, and Vanessa V. Konbanwa, Konnichiwa. I hope you guys are all having a great day or a great evening. Tara, pronounced Tara, from Florida. Good morning. Good morning. So, how is everyone doing today? I hope you're excited to get started with Lesson 8. I know some of you are well past Lesson 8. Some of you aren't quite there yet. But before we do that, one thing I forgot to mention when I was over on the join page for memberships was smash that like button. It helps get this stream out there so that other people who are studying Genki right now can also get some help if they need it and join us here in chat. Smash that like button if you don't mind. I really appreciate it. And hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. The bell helps as well. All right, so today we are covering all of these things, eight sections. The first and the second are probably the longest, and everything after that is pretty straightforward. But let's go ahead and jump into the first one. And just like always, I'm going to go through an, a full section. We'll go through the dialogue at the end, and at the end of my uh, explanation of the dialogue, I'll get to your questions and we can hang out in between each section. So jumping into it, the first thing tonight is short forms in Japanese. Now, the first thing we're gonna cover, it's pretty straightforward, is the Japanese informal positive. So the, the positive present tense in Japanese for informal verb, like for informal conversation, is just the dictionary form of a verb. So for example, taberu. That's to eat. It's the dictionary form. If you're talking about eating in the present tense or in the future, you just have to say the dictionary form, which is taberu. If you want to use an e adjective 
uh, in the in an informal conversation. We'll we'll cover a little bit later in the lesson. That's the second section. How to use these in informal conversation. But first, we're just going to go over the conjugations, and then we'll try to use them. Uh, but anyway, adjectives, e adjectives, the informal form is just the adjective on its own. In polite conversation, you have this after an e, e adjective. You don't need that for informal speech. Um, whoa, Lynn. Lynn just became a patron. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. So cool. All right. Thank you. I'm, I'm all giddy now. So not adjectives and nouns. To use them in an informal conversation, you just add da to the end. For example, nihonjin da. Now, with that said, in actual conversation, like spoken conversation, you can actually drop that da as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you don't actually have to have the da. So you could just say, mm, nihonjin or genki, right? Stuff like that. But in written informal conversation, generally you're going to have the da. So the meat of this lesson, the conjugations in this lesson, is the Japanese informal negative. That's going to take us a little bit of an explanation, but I've got some good news. And that is that if you got the mas form down, you're going to have no problem with the informal negative because it's very, very similar. And this is what's so nice about godan verbs. Uh, Genki actually hints at the whole godan verb um, process in this chapter, in chapter 8. But we're going to go over it just for, um, for negative verbs today. So we have v negative, verb negative, plus Nai. So this is just like vimas, right? But vineg. So how do you get the negative verb stem? Well, it's super, super easy. All you have to do is you know that verbs always end in an u sound, like u, tsu, du, su, mu, nu, bu, ku, and gu. Well, all you have to do is basically move up the hiragana chart to the a column. So for example, tsu becomes ta. Ru becomes da, su becomes sa, mu becomes ma, etc. And then you add nai. Now, there's only two you need to be careful about. U does not become a. So, for example, utau, utau, which is to sing, does not become uta nai. It becomes uta wa nai. So, u becomes wa, right? And du, of course, like with every single conjugation, there are ichidan verbs, which are iru and edu verbs, and those are conjugated a little bit differently. We'll cover those in a little bit. But most verbs that end in do, you'll change the do, tada, and add nai, just like this. Utao becomes utawa nai, not sing. Noru becomes noda nai, not get on. Matsu becomes mata nai, not wait. Kiku becomes kika nai, not listen. Isogu becomes isoga nai, not hurry. Nomu becomes noma nai, not drink. Shinu becomes shinanai, so that's two, two nas. That, that can be a little bit confusing at first, but luckily there's only one new verb basically in modern Japanese that you will ever, ever use, and that is shinu. So if you learn this one, you got it down. Shinanai, not dai. Asobu becomes asoba nai, and hanasu becomes hanasa nai. So you just take the dictionary form, move it up to the a sound of that last hiragana, so su becomes sa, and add nai. And you have the informal negative in Japanese. That's it. Ichidan verbs are a little bit different. Ichidan verbs, for those of you who don't remember, are verbs that end in an iru or edu sound. So miru, that mi ru. If you write it out in romaji, it's m i r u, iru. It's an iru or an edu verb. So it's ichidan. So all you have to do for those is cut off the ru and add nai. Miru becomes minai, not look. Neru becomes nenai. Not sleep, and okiru becomes okinai. Not wake up or not get up. Now, just like in all these situations, there are 10, at least 10 that I know of, exceptions to that iru edu rule. And by exception, I just mean they're not conjugated the same way as other iru edu verbs. They're conjugated like normal godan verbs. So, hairu becomes hairanai. Hashiru becomes hashiranai, not run. Iru becomes iranai. I don't need or not need. Kairu becomes kairanai. Kagiru becomes kagiranai, not limit. Kiru becomes kiranai, not cut. Shaberu becomes shaberanai, not speak. Shiru becomes shiranai, not no. Keru becomes keranai, not kick. And suberu becomes 
suberanai, not slide. And that's the exception to the iruero verbs. There are two irregular verbs that are irregular in almost all conjugations in Japanese, and those are kuru and suru. Kuru becomes konai. Suru becomes shinai. So you have to be careful with those, but they're so common that you will get used to them pretty quick after making a mistake a few times, which is fine. I made mistakes with these ones all the time. If you're speaking really fast sometimes, I even make them now. Not really, but sometimes. Okay, so that's verbs, right? Adjectives and nouns are also very, very simple. For e adjectives, all you do is you replace the e at the end with ku, and then add nai. So it looks like it looks like a verb, to be honest. It looks like it. A verb that ends in kunai, though, which is, you know, whatever. Na adjectives and nouns. Na adjectives, remember, are basically nouns, but that can be used as adjectives, so we call them na adjectives, just to make it simpler. And nouns, all you do to make them negative in informal Japanese is add janai to the end. Remember, in formal Japanese, it was janai desu, so kire janai desu, or kire de wa arimasen. It's, a, it's much more formal, but in informal Japanese, it's just janai on its own. So, for example, we've got tanoshi becomes tanoshiku nai. Cut that e, turn it or turn it into turn the e into ku, whatever you want to think about it as. You move those two lines that are next to each other into a um, what do you call it? I think of ku as like the Pac-Man mouth. Turn it into a Pac-Man mouth and add nai. Tanoshiku nai. Kawaii becomes kawaii ku nai, right? Kirei becomes kirei janai, not beautiful. Shizuka becomes shizuka. Janai, not quiet. Nihonjin becomes Nihonjin Janai, not Japanese. And that's it. That is how you conjugate adjectives and verbs into their informal negative and what their positive present tenses are in informal Japanese. So I don't have any example sentences or dialogue for that section because the next section in Genki is short forms in informal speech. So basically, how you use them, what situations you use them in, and whatnot. And that's what we're going to be covering in this section. So I saved all the example sentences and the dialogue for this section. So that's what we're going over next. But before we do that, let's jump into chat and see how everyone's doing. And make sure you're all following my explanation and that you can hear me. All right. So let's see what's happening. Hope you're having a great time. Ohayo Andokun. Ohayo Ryu. Can you even use the mo like that? It feels kind of wrong now that I try it. Ohayo mo. Ah, you, you would actually say Yuki san mo. Oh, somebody already said it. Oh, yeah. Yuki san mo. Ohayo. Ch -ch -ch. Finally subscribed to your Patreon. Thank you. Thank you, Lin. I got that notification. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're going to get a pin badge too. Donnie Beck says, hello, swag. Awesome. Hello. Stayed up late today, stopping by to say hi. You guys rock. Thank you, Kim. Appreciate it. Hello, says Simbonga. And there's a cat coming out of Pai uh, Zyren's box. Oh, I've already read these ones. <laughs> okay. It may be useful to note that what Genki calls the dictionary form is often called the conclusive or predicate, uh, predicative in other resources because it concludes as the predicate. Nice. Oh, congrats, Lynn. You're getting renewed. Mm. Off in August and come back in September. That's great news. Good. I'm happy that that worked out. Simpy101, good evening. I hope you're having a good night, too. Or a good day. I guess it's a good day. Good morning. Good morning. I always forget the times. Ah, the negative of kuru. Preserves in archaic form indeed. Konai. I'm only on lesson four, but I'll be back soon. See you when you come back, dirt racer. Well, Japanese adjectives are often described as light verbs in linguistic treatments of Japanese. It's a feature I've encountered in no other language, though I'm sure it must exist elsewhere. Probably. I feel like, um, I, I know there's a lot of similarities in, um, what's the language that's in northern Spain again? It's not Catalonian, it's, um, uh, Crap. Basque? Basque is actually very similar to Japanese in many ways, but I don't know if that's one of them. Might be one to look into. But yeah, good point. I haven't even started Lesson 1, but I'm here, says Anna. Welcome, Anna. I hope this is probably a bit advanced if you haven't done Lesson 1 yet, but maybe when you get back to it in a couple of weeks or months, hopefully it'll make a little more sense then. But good evening, again. thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. Konnichiwa, minna-san, says Stellar Chocobo. Konnichiwa, sounding good, says one on it. Just want to say thanks for this. Thank you, Andrea. Appreciate you being here, and I appreciate, I appreciate all of you being here. Could you please show the irregular verbs slide? I absolutely can. Irregular verbs slide is... Wait, irregular verbs slide is in this one, I'm assuming. There you go. <clears throat> hey, I'm French, but I want to learn, says Bella. 
welcome. We've got a few French uh, people from France. I believe most of them are French. Um, who are here learning as well. So hopefully they can help you a little bit too if you're confused about anything. So nice to be here for the live lesson, says Swag Place Danny Little. I'm so happy you are too. Thank you. Uh, Basque. Yes, Basque. That's the one. Thank you. Somehow I managed to remember. You guys got me. You got my back. All right. So if there's no questions, we'll, we'll sort of give it a minute just to let a few more people trickle in. I see we've got about 45 people here right now. And uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, before we jump into the short forms and informal speech section. So yeah, I am now, just another quick update, I guess. I am now on vacation until almost the end of August. So I have no work, regular work, my regular day job, until somewhere August 24th, maybe? So I've got like a month to really get ahead on certain things. And I plan on releasing a bunch of different videos that I've been, like, not just Genki Lessons. I've got lots of update videos, of Wani Kani review. Eventually, there's going to be the Genki 2 review coming out soon. I've got videos like, um, what do I have planned? I have all kinds of stuff planned. Wani Kani review. I've got some vlogs that are, like, short mini vlogs that are going to be all in Japanese with English subtitles. So you can get some maybe listening practice or see how, you know, I or we use Japanese in day-to-day -day life. I want to cover go-down verbs, why you need a Kindle if you study Japanese, uh, intro to kanji, how to find sentences for Japanese Anki decks, how I study Japanese, and how I plan to get to N1+. Plus. So I've got all these videos planned that I can hopefully do on top of this stuff now that I have some more time. What? So that's exciting. All right. I am pretty relaxed. Had a good day today. All be bien toto. I can't read that. I'm terrible, terrible, terrible at French. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and jump into the short forms in informal speech section. Uh, let's see, stream settings, analytics. Right, one more time. So let's go ahead and jump into short forms in informal speech. This is going to be how we use what we just learned in the last section. So the first thing to cover is that informal forms in conversation are generally only used between family members, among equals, and by equals, I mean equals in both rank within a company and age or grade in school. Close friends, very close friends, even if their age is a little bit different, if they're really close friends, it doesn't matter so much. They may use casual forms anyway. For example, I'm really good friends with a bunch of old guys at my community center. And generally, when we speak to each other, we all use informal Japanese. We're also usually a little bit tipsy, so that helps loosen, loosen it up a little bit. Also, when you're speaking to children, you are generally going to use short forms. And when you're speaking to your subordinates or people who are younger than you, you're going to be using short forms. So people who have been at a company, uh, you've been there for four years, they've been there for four months, you know, you're going to speak to them in informal, casual Japanese, generally speaking. And they'll probably be using more formal Japanese with you. So in the dialogue today, we have a character who speaks using formal Japanese. They're probably younger than the person they're speaking to. And the other person is using informal Japanese so that you can get a better idea of that. Okay. Some other things to, to keep in mind are that informal forms in conversation. Let's make sure this is okay. Informal forms in conversation. Particles are often dropped in general in Japanese, right? But in informal conversation, they're dropped a lot. And you can really experiment experiment with how, like what you drop to see how it works. Certain things can never be dropped. Um, I can't think of an, a good example off the top of my head right now, but certain, certain con like, um, like ni, uh, ni is often not dropped when you're talking about going someplace, stuff like that. But in general, there's a lot of dropping, especially the o particle, the wa particle, and the ga particle. There's no ka at the end of questions. Usually it's rising intonation at the end of a short form to indicate that you're asking a question. In written Japanese, you'll just have a question mark instead of the ka marker. The da, I mentioned this earlier, it's dropped after adjectives and nouns in spoken conversation, except for when you use the ending particles like yo and ne or yo ne. Then you have to have da, like kire da yo ne, kire yo doesn't work. It needs to be kire da yo. Okay, so that's important. And instead of the words hai and ie, you're generally going to use things like n and n. Those are much more common 
in informal Japanese. E and e is sometimes used, but those are those are those are also kind of formal. If if you don't know, e is uh, it means yes. <laughs> All right, and I just wanted to I add this added this note here. I've already hinted at it, but just because someone uses informal language with you does not mean that you should use it with them. It doesn't mean that you're in a position to use it with them. Now, as a foreigner who is learning Japanese, you generally get a pass. If you use informal Japanese with someone you maybe shouldn't be using it with, most people don't mind. So don't worry about it too much. When I first started learning Japanese, I started from informal Japanese. I didn't use a textbook or anything in the beginning. I just learned some informal Japanese and I tried to use it with my friends. And nobody minded. They, they found it pretty funny. Like if you don't speak perfect Japanese and you're using informal Japanese, nobody cares. When you get to a certain level, I think when you're kind of fluent, it's a little bit more important to start being more polite. So honestly, it's probably a good habit in the beginning to be as polite as possible. But, you know, play around with informal forms just to see, see what you can get away with. So let's go ahead and cover some examples. Our first one is Aisu, Aisu, Aisu taberu, Aisu taberu, Will you eat ice cream? So this is dropping the O particle. So generally it would be Aisu wo taberu, but you can drop that O particle and say Aisu taberu, right? Yuki sounds like she wants to say something. Let's let's stop and ask her. Oh,大丈夫. Okay. Our next one is sampo ni iku. Sampo ni iku. I'll go for a walk. Sampo ni iku. Now remember this will you and the I, it's implied. Don't have it in here. It might be watashi wa sampo ni iku. In conversation, informal conversation especially, you definitely are going to be dropping a lot of pronouns. Not going to use them much. Especially personal pronouns. Um, with that said, ore, ore wa nantoka suru. Uh, more informal ones like ore and atashi instead of watashi for girls are pretty common in informal speech for when you do need to say I. Ashita wa ameda. Ashita wa ameda. Tomorrow it will rain. Ashita wa ameda. Tomorrow it will rain. So there's a noun, you just add da to the end. Once again, if it's in speech, you could say something just like "ashita wa ame." That's okay. You don't need the da, but in written Japanese, you're generally going to have that da, and you can say it in conversation. You don't have to drop it, but you are allowed to. There's a. It's very flexible when it comes to that Japanese. Here's some slightly more complicated sentences. Manga wo yomanai. So remember, this is the verb. Um, well, you don't remember. We haven't talked about it yet. But yomu yomu is the verb to read. And to make the informal negative, you take change mu, the u sound to a, becomes ma, yoma, nai. Manga wo yomanai. Or just manga yomanai would be okay as well in conversation. And that means I don't read comic books. Mise, mise wa aite inai yo. The store is not open, you know. Would actually probably should have put you know at the end of this. Aite inai. So you'll notice here we're using the te iru form from last week. Aite iru, right? But it's not open. So to use the te iru negative in informal speech, it would be te inai. Aite inai yo. Now in conversation, te iru, you often do not pronounce that I that comes in between. So in conversation, I would probably say something more like "aite nai yo, aite nai yo," dropping that i. But if I were to write it out, it would be "aite nai." Conversation, "aite nai." Just keep that in mind. You don't have to memorize that yet, but just know that when someone says use the te negative form with you or the te iru form in informal speech with you, they're probably going to drop that i. Just so you know. Next sentence. Mada ringo ga akaku nai. Mada ringo ga akaku nai. The apple is not yet red, or the apple is not red yet. Mada is yet. Akaku nai. There's our e adjective change into the informal negative. Akaku nai. It's not red yet. It's not turning red. It's still a little bit too green. Don't eat it yet. Unless you're into that kind of thing. All right. Got a few more sentences because we need some positive ones in there too. Koen de biru o nomu. I drink beer at the park. Now, this is a fun little culture, culture 
point for those of you living in the United States of America. In the United States of America, in most places in the country, you are not allowed to drink alcohol in public. That may be parks, it could be, you know, on the street, whatever. In Japan, as well as in a lot of places in Europe, so this won't be as surprising to you guys, but in Japan you can drink anywhere. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can drink on the train, you can drink in the car. If you're not the one driving, if you're just sitting in the passenger seat, you can drink in the car. There's no open container laws in Japan. So as long as you're not drinking as the driver, your passengers are free to drink as much as they want. You can also drink in public parks. You can drink while you're walking down the street. You can drink in front of a convenience store. You can drink in the train station. A lot of people pass out in the train station on the, passed out wasted on a bench in the train station while they're waiting for the train. They don't really get in trouble for it. So they're very, very, uh, I guess, liberal when it comes to their alcohol laws here. Just so you're aware. So koen de biru o nomu is completely okay. Koen de biru o nomu. I drink beer at the park. So that's just the dictionary form, right? Or the predicative. Predicative, I guess. I'm, I'm bad at grammatical terms in English. Andy wa kouko no sensei da. Yuki wrote this sentence. Andy wa kouko no sensei da. Andy is a high school teacher, and I am a part-time high school teacher nowadays, so that's an appropriate sentence. Andy wa kouko no sensei da. And once again, in conversation, you could drop that da if you were just talking to someone about Andy. Kyo wa amari atsuku nai. That's not really true. Today was pretty hot. Kyo wa amari atsuku nai. It's not very hot today. Remember, well, I don't know if we've covered am amari yet. Amari must be used with a negative. So a negative verb or a negative adjective, in this case an adjective. And it means not very, right? So not very something. Amari atsukunai. It's not very hot today. Last example is a conversation, two different conversations, between a person who is two people. Uh, the first one is people at different levels. So one is older, one is younger maybe. And the next one is between friends. So the first one is, Donna anime o anime wo mimasu ka? What kind of anime do you watch? This person's probably younger or of a lower status. Donna anime wo mimasu ka? The answer is Nichijo ke anime wo yoku miru. Yoku miru. Nichijo ke anime wo yoku miru. I watch a lot of daily life animes. Nichijo ke is daily life. Daily life manga or daily life anime, right? So you'll notice here we've got polite form. Person asking a question in the polite form, the responder is using informal positive just the dictionary form and that's okay if that person is older than the other person or whatever i i another reason i learned the informal first is because they're shorter they're easier you can drop a lot more so it was easier to like just start speaking fast early on by using these forms whether or not that instilled some bad habits i'm not sure i don't think so but i found the informal easier to just start speaking right away than trying to remember how to do uh more polite japanese but Maybe that's just me. Next conversation is between friends or maybe family. Nani taberu? Nani taberu? What do you want to eat? Or what are you going to eat? Nan demo ii. Anything is fine. Nan demo ii. Nan demo means anything. E in this situation is fine. Anything is fine. Nani taberu? Nan demo ii. Anything is fine. I say that way too much. All right, so we're, we're to our conversation today. We've got B and A. Those are the only two characters in our conversations today, and it is a continuing story. So let's get started. Takeshi-san no kekkonshiki ni ikimasu ka? Ikanai. B-san wa iku? Ikimasu yo. Takeshi-san wa dare to kekkon suru? E? Wasuremashtaka? Eh. Alright, let's read that at full speed. Takeshi san no kekkon shiki ni ikimasu ka? Ikanai. B san wa iku? Ikimasu yo. Takeshi san wa dare to kekkon suru? Eh? Wasuremashtaka? Eh. Alright, so you'll notice that B is probably younger or of a lower status, and A is the older one because we've got formal Japanese and informal Japanese. So let's go ahead and go over those meanings. Takeshi-san no kekkon shiki ni ikimasu ka? Will you go to Takeshi's wedding? Takeshi, Mr. Takeshi's wedding, perhaps. Ikanai. Oh, oop. B-san wa iku? Ikanai. So I translated this as no. 
Bisamu iku, will you go? Remember that you generally don't say you in Japanese if you know the person you're speaking to. You will generally use their name. But in the translation, you're not going to put their name because if you were talking to a person named Mr. B, you wouldn't say, no, will Mr. B go? That would be weird in English. It would be very uncomfortable. You say you. But in Japanese, you don't generally. So, ikanai, bisama iku becomes no, will you go? Now, why is ikanai no? Because the question was, will you go? Ikimasu ka? But you don't generally, especially in formal Japanese, you, you might say, mm. But when you're responding to a question that is using a verb, for some reason, and I don't know the reason for this off the top of my head, but you generally respond with the positive or negative version of that verb that was asked of you. So, taberu. Tabenai. You don't you, you can say mm. But just mm feels a little weird. Generally you're gonna say mm taberu. Mm. Mm. Tabenai. Okay? But the English translation of that would just be yes or no. So the literal translation of this is will not go. Will Miss B go? Or will Mr. B go? That's the literal translation of that. The the more good English would be no. Will you go? Keep that in mind. Ikimasu yo. Yes. So remember, the question up above was, Iku, will you go? Ikimasu yo. Literally, will go. Because we've dropped the watashi wa, so it's, but it's, I will go. The English translation that I used was, yes. Takeshi san wa dare to kekkon suru? Who will Takeshi marry? Dare is who. That's straightforward enough, right? But it's just the kekkon suru is the dictionary form of suru plus kekkon, which is marry. You put those together, it becomes to marry or to get married. Eh? Wasuremashita ka? What? Did you forget? Eh, eh is just like a he. Little laugh. I use he or he he a lot in what I'm writing. And like in, in Discord, I probably do it a lot. I never do that. I never he he in real life. But anyway, ehe is something that you would probably hear people say a lot. In Japanese, when they're, when they're like a little embarrassed or something like, ehe, yatchatta, I did that. So our next section is I think, how to say I think in Japanese, which is actually using informal Japanese along with something else. But we'll cover that in a few minutes, so stick around if you want to learn about that. For now, let's go ahead and check out what's happening in chat and see if anyone has any questions. All right. That was a long section. I think the next ones are going to be a little bit faster. My Kindle is dead! Zyra, no! That's terrible. I love my Kindle. I kind of want one of the new ones, but I might as well wait for the next version to come out. That's French. I'm saying hi to people. I see. Bonjour. Merci. Hi, my boyfriend and I really appreciate your channel. We only just started learning Genki, but we're here to support you. Thank you, Azing. I think it's Azing, but thank you. Appreciate it. I'm glad you guys are uh, finding the material helpful. I hope you continue to find it helpful. Uh, I'm watching Midnight Dinner Diner, and everyone seems to speak informally. Is this because they are all equal in the izakaya? It's possible. Um, they're probably all part-timers if they're working in an izakaya. Or by part-timer, I mean not part-timers, but maybe they all started at the same time, or maybe they're all if they hang out a lot after work or outside of work, maybe they're all friends. Or good friends. So even people who aren't necessarily the same age, if they're really close, like they hang out a lot, they do stuff together all the time, they'll often use informal Japanese together. So it could be any of those things. Hey, Walter, how you doing? Good to see ya. Oh, I like watching Midnight Diner. So chill. I've never heard of it. Is it an anime or is it a TV show? It's great, isn't it? Says Chris. I just introduced my wife and kids to Spirited Away last night and they like, but they think it is the weirdest thing they have ever seen. Yes. Spirited Away, right? So the first time I watched it, I was in high school. I was probably 13 or 14 years old. And I really liked it, but I didn't get it. I didn't, like, I didn't, I didn't know what was going on. I, I thought it was really cool. And, like, the, the style and the, the I want to say, funinki, the atmosphere was really neat. But I watched it again a couple of years ago after living in Japan for quite a few years and being able to speak Japanese, and I watched it in Japanese. And... I got it. it. It all made sense all of a sudden because it's actually like the perfect representation of how Japanese people actually think about the world. Like, actually think about it. Um, ancient Japan and even 
to some extent, modern Japan it was and in some ways still is very animistic. That, and by that I mean things are alive. Things. Your cell phone is alive. Your camera is alive. That rock over there is alive. The view itself, the view from a mountain is a being, a god of, or a, a kami, a spirit, right? The view. So you're, you'll be climbing a mountain and you'll see a shrine and you'll think that maybe there's a god in the shrine, but that's not exactly it. What is enshrined in that shrine is the view from that point. So looking out from that point, from the mountain, at the view, that is a kami, that view. It's a thing. So it's, it's enshrined as a thing. So you stop at that shrine and you can remember that, wow, that's amazing, this thing, right? But it's also, in some ways, like even ways people talk about things, like they'll call their things he or she sometimes. And you, you think about it, and that all comes from the, this ancient Shinto. Shinto was, was the, ancient, uh, the old religion in Japan, and it's still sort of the religion in Japan in some ways. Most people aren't religious, but everyone is Shinto and Buddhist, but they're not religious. So Buddhism generally governs over, the, over death. So when you, you die, you go to, well, you're dead, but you go to a Buddhist temple. During life, when you want things in your life, like you want, you want to make more money or you want to, you know, have a better relationship with your kids or whatever, you go to a Shinto shrine to pray for that. If you want to have a good afterlife, you go to a Buddhist temple to pray for that. So anyway... That's sort of a sidetrack, but yes. So Spirited Away is basically a representation of the way Japanese people think about the world in general. So that's not really the afterlife. That is all those spirits in Spirited Away are actual things in Japan. So like one of the monsters was the one that they clean. They pull all the stuff out of in the in the bath when the when the main girl first starts working in at the Ryokan. That is a river. That's a river. Like, that spirit is the river, and the river is dirty. It represents that the river is full of garbage and stuff. And she basically cleans out that kami, and it sort of represents her cleaning the river. Mm -hmm. Right? So, like, when you make your river dirty, you're actually making a being dirty. You're, you're ruining a, some kami's life because the river is alive, is how Japanese people see the world. And they don't think about it. Like, it's sort of unconscious, but... It's really how most people think, but not in a religious way. It's just how their minds work, and, and you'll see it in the language, and after you start learning the language more, and maybe if you've lived in Japan for a while, let's pop this up, you'll see Spirited Away will make sense, and it will also make the way people think in Japan make more sense to you. So I, I really love it. This, like, the first time I liked it, the second time watching it, I loved it because like just clicked. Such a good movie. On we go. Super big sidetrack there. Spirited Away terrified my kids, but my youngest son wants to watch Princess Momonoke every Earth Day. <laughs> I need to watch that again. I like that. Howie's Moving Castle I've never seen. I've never seen that one. Yo, Ethan! How's it going, man? Good to see ya. I will go through the Studio Ghibli movies, but save Princess Momonoke till the end. I've only seen that one once, but I really liked it. Mango yomanai? Anta wa sugokunai? I do... Actually, I don't read manga much. I should read more, but I prefer novels. I liked when Mar Marnie was there, too. You guys should check it out. When oh. Marnie was there. Hmm. I've never seen that one either. Except Grave of the Fireflies. Cannot watch that one twice. I've never seen that one either. I, I haven't seen too many. Too many. I've recently been listening to the main theme of Princess Momonoke late lately. It's really nice. I love Joe Hisaishi's music. Hmm. The music is really good in that movie. Can we always drop furu? For Ame, even in formal. So it's not so much so in my sentence, it's not that I dropped, let's go back to that sentence quick. It's not that I dropped furu. So it's a bit different. It's a different structure here. Let's see, was it in this sentence? Yeah, there it is. Ashita wa ame da. So if I were going to say it will rain tomorrow or rain will fall tomorrow, I would say ame ga furu, right? But you can also just use ame, the noun, and des. It is rain tomorrow. It will rain tomorrow is probably not the most accurate translation. This literally means tomorrow it is rain, right? And that's a different way of saying the same thing. It's not that I dropped furu. It's just a different way of saying the same thing. So you can say, mm, what's a good example? That's, that's one of the best examples. Hare da. So hare is a noun that means clear. 
hareda, hareda. It's another example of the same way to do. It's not that I'm dropping the do in haredu, which also means is the verb for to be clear, there to become clear. It's that it's a different way of saying the same thing. So you can say ashita wa ame desu, right? In formal Japanese, but you're not dropping furu. You're just saying it in a different way. What else we got? <laughs> Yuki said, "Soonanda." Can you? Oh, it looks like Yuki said something different. Mm. She she didn't re know what I just said, but I still stand by what I said, regardless of what she said there. Yes, you can. Ame furu ne. We very often say this. Yes, you can also say that. Or maybe your question was different. Did I not understand your question? Oh God, there's so much text here. I don't know if I can read all this, guys. We'll never get through tonight. Uh, can we always drop furu? Okay, yeah, no, I did answer your question. Princess Kaguya is pretty good. Can one use mada with a positive declaration to mean mada means something else? Mada, mada taberu. Yes, in that case, it will mean are you still going to eat? So, mada with a negative is haven't yet, like not yet. Um, mada with a positive means will you still do something? Mada tabeniku. Are you still gonna go eat? So yes, it can be used with positives. It's just a slightly different meaning. You can drink out in the street in Key West, Florida. Ah, oh, can you? There's, you can also drink in uh, Vegas. Those are the only places I know of for sure, though. Hi, Japanese native here. Oh, hi, Hi, Jalaiega. Nice to see you. Konbanwa. Koko wa ne. Koko wa konbanwa desu kere do. Oh, hi, datara. Jalai san wa doko ni sunde iru de shou ka? I thought you taught kindergarten. I used to. And I still do teach some English in kindergarten, but I switched jobs to, so that I could work on my YouTube and Patreon more. So I went from working 180 hours a month, or probably more like 200 hours a month, to 40 hours a month, which is pretty awesome. The comments are coming to me in advance of Andy speaking, so you all look like precog telepaths. <laughs> I see da frequently in anime. Tofugu said it can be rude to use da. Is that true? No. It's not completely true. I mean, it's not rude to use da in a situation where it's okay for you to speak informally. So in a situation where you're, it's fine for you to be using informal Japanese, it's not rude to say da. But there are some sentences out there where it can seem a little harsh. But like ameda is not rude in any, any way. And it's actually kind of, I feel like it's hard to use da in a rude way without learning a lot more Japanese, so I wouldn't worry about it yet. Just just using it in general to mean like this is not rude, I don't think. Uh, oh, how would I forget? Hello, Yuki, says Walter. Hello. I get up in time? You did, Nath. You only missed the first section, or the second, first and second section, I guess? The informal, okay, I'm going to have to just scan through all of these. There's so many comments. I love that. Thank you guys so much. Uh, but I can't answer all the questions tonight because we'll never finish. Would Taksan Nichijo anime o anime o miru also make sense? Yuki already answered. Thank you. Is it worth it to learn informal Japanese as you can't really know when to use it? In French, I use informal form when the other person uses it. In Japanese, I'm afraid to use it wrong. You need to learn it because people are going to use it with you all the time. And as a foreigner learning Japanese, I mentioned this a little bit earlier. You're given a free pass 99.9999999% of the time when it comes to Japanese. Unless you're of Asian descent, maybe? Like, if you look Japanese and people think you're Japanese and you use it improperly, they might be a little bit off-put. But then when they find out, oh no, this person's from, I don't know. Most Japanese people can tell the difference between pe different um, Asian group people from different countries, but say they find out, oh, you're Korean. Oh, okay. Then they, then they don't care anymore. Because even Japanese people understand that their levels of formality are very complicated. And even Japanese people have hard times with things like keigo, which is extremely formal Japanese. And they actually have to study it before starting jobs where they need to use it. So you should learn it because it's easier to use than formal Japanese, in my opinion. So you'll be more likely to try using it, just because you can remember how to use it easier. And people are going to use it with you all the time. So, And especially if you ever hang out with people younger than you, or you have to speak with kids and stuff, speaking formal Japanese to a child is just kind of funny. <laughs> so I would definitely spend some time to learn it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm going to skip down. It looks like we've covered most of the actual questions. All right. 
we really don't end sentences with da. I feel like men do a lot, little bit more. Like I hear it in sentences ending in da la. I, I, I'll generally drop it in conversation. And that's one thing that Genki points out is that using da, you can drop it at the end of nouns and at the end of adjectives in conversation quite frequently. Um, but in written Japanese and informal Japanese, you do need it. And in certain situations, you also need it. Like da yo ne, stuff like that. Kirei da yo ne. Like, you have to have da in that situation. But I guess so, to your point, you're saying we don't end the sentence with da. And in that, in that sentence, the, we end it with yo or yo ne. So, point taken. Uh, where is Come to Japan, by the way? Tonight, Come to Japan and Kyushu Trails are filming a new vi a video for their new channel. They made a channel about ghost uh, haunted places in Japan. So they made a new channel about that because their, their videos from Inunaki Tunnel down in Kyushu blew up. So I was com I was pushing Dan. I was like, you need to you need to just change your channel to 100% haunted places because he's really good at it. Like he went into that tunnel alone, and they went into like these crazy tunnels in the dark, like at night. So they they've got the like the guts for it. I was like, you need to just make channels for it, and that's not why they did it. Because I encouraged them. It's just that they went and did it, not because I said it, though I did suggest it. Cultural question: Is it rude as a foreign atheist to collect? No, anyone can collect those stamps, Lena. Perfectly okay. Because even Japanese people aren't super religious in any way, but they still collect, you know, Japanese people still collect them who aren't. The dot particle is not a particle. It's a sentence ender. It's like this. It's basically the informal version of this. And we'll cover in a few minutes some other situations where we use it. I use the cleaning the water spirit scene from Spirited Away as a mnemonic for this kanji. Oh, nice. Ohayo says Jake. Ohayo, ame da yo. Gohan da yo. Otoko no ko da yo. With da yo, yo softens it. Yes. It's a good point. It softens it. I never thought of it that way. I always thought of it as like giving information that somebody didn't know. But that actually makes more sense that it softens the da a bit. I like that. Good. Thank you. It's always nice to have natives in chat to help out with this stuff. So, looks like we've caught up with all the questions. So, let's go ahead and jump into I think. In Japanese, this is using informal form forms that we've just learned. So basically, to say I think in Japanese, you take an informal sentence that ends in an informal verb or in an informal adjective or something like that, and then you add to omo. To omo. Now in Genki, it teaches the formal version of this, which is informal sentence plus to omoimas. Now to omoimas, of course, means think. But it also makes a sentence you're saying it really, really polite. So if I say, Ashita wa tomodachi no uchi ni iku to moimasu. If I say that, it means I think I'm going to go to my friend's house tomorrow. But it also makes the sentence really polite. So you'll hear people saying to omoimasu about things that they are going to do. Not that they think they're going to do. Like, they're going to do it. And you know they're going to do it. And it's part of the plan at work to do it. But they say to omoimasu. Which is a little bit odd. Because it means literally, I think. But it also makes the sentence super polite. Now, I had a principal at my last kindergarten that I worked at who hated that. He hated that sentence. People would say during meetings, Kyo wa issho ni gohan. What's a good, better example? Ano... Fujigumi to issho ni asobitai to omoimasu. We want to play with Fuji class, I think. But that just makes it super formal and polite. And that, that principal would get super angry about it. He was like, to omoimasu is not a way to make sentences more polite. It means, I think. And you don't, you don't think you're going to do it. You're going to do it. So don't say that. But almost everyone I know does use it that way. So just be aware, people will be using to omoimasu to make the things they're saying, especially things they want to do. So like, ikitai to omoimasu, to make it more polite, at least in their minds. But it's not technically grammatically used for that. For that, so older people might not like it too much. But anyway, to omo at the end of an informal sentence means, I think. So here are some examples. Dekinai to omoimasu. I don't think... You can do it, or I don't think I can do it. It depends on whatever pronoun or whoever you're talking to. It depends on the context. That's why I always put you or I or whatever I'm saying in gray because it's implied. I don't think you can do it, or I don't think I can do it. Dekinai to omoimasu. 
高くないと思います。I don't think it is expensive. So the first thing you need to notice here is that the sentences that come before と思います are informal. できない。It's the informal conjugation of できる、which is to do. 高くない。That's the informal, look, there's no dis. The informal negative of the adjective 高い、which is expensive. 高くないと思います。I don't think it's expensive. 二十歳だと思います。So here's a, a noun.、Uh, it means 20 years old. Hatachi. I think they are 20 years old.、Uh, 20歳 You could say 20歳 but ha- this is actually read as hatachi. I used to know why that is. It's from old Japanese. I think a reading of the, the kanji for two came in ancient Japanese was read as ha. Ten, the kanji for ten in ancient Japanese was read as ta. And sai, I believe, was. It's shortened to chi when you use it in ancient Japanese for age. So, this is a leftover from, from very old Japanese. So, nijusai actually becomes hatachi. Hatachi da to moimas. I think they are 20 years old. And that's also, we use da because it's an informal sentence. And you need to have that da. So, in this situation, you have to have da. You can't say hatachi to moimas. It's grammatically incorrect. You need to have the da before the to. So basically, when, when an informal sentence or noun or whatever is, is followed by to or any particle like yo or ne, you need to have the da after it. Same with na adjective. So, kire da to omoimas. Kire da to omoimas. I think it's beautiful. You have to have that da. Some more complicated sentence. We have yoku kaimono suru to omoimas. I think I often go shopping, or I think they often go shopping. Once again, in gray, implied. Yoku kaimono suru to moimas. I think I go shopping a lot. Yama ga kire da to moimas. Yama ga kire da to moimas. I think the mountain is beautiful. Yama ga kire da to moimas. Remember, we've got the na adjective here. Need to have da before to moimas. To make this, if, if you were speaking in an informal, an actual informal situation, right? So, let me just mention that this section is all about using informal speech to do other things, like use to think. Now, if you wanted to say you think something in an informal situation, you would make this sentence, Yama ga kire, yama ga kire da to omo. Right? You would just use the informal conjugation or the dictionary form of omo, which is to think. Wasabi ga karaku nai to omoimas. Karaku nai to omoimas. I don't think wasabi is spicy. I do. I, I think it's spicy. But I really like it. Do you, guys like, do you guys like wasabi? I'm a big fan. All right, so that brings, brings us to the continuation of why A san doesn't know who Takeshi is getting married to. Mary san to kekkon shimasu yo. Ah, yonensei da ne. Yonensei da ne. Ah, I forgot. I've got to read this slowly first. Mary san to kekkon shimasu yo. Ah, ヨネンセだね。そうだと思います。二人結婚するのが早いね。まあ、二年間付き合ったと思いますが、あ、I ビールを飲みます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありが
what's the perfect translation of so? In this case, I just translated it as yes, so da, so des, yes, to omoimas. Yes, I think that is the case. Futari kekon suru no ga hayai ne. Those two are quick to get married, aren't they? That's the ne, right? Kekon suru no ga hayai ne. There's there's one thing. Oh no, this is the new thing. No ga hayai ne. We're gonna cover that a little bit later. That's nominalizing the sentence before it, and that's the it's two two or three sections from now. So stick around if you want to learn more about that. But anyway, this no ga nominalizes what comes before it, which is futari kekon suru. They're they they're fast to get married. Ma well. 2年間付き合ったと思いますが付き合う付き合う means to date. It also means to hang out. Like if your friend wants to hang out, 今日は付き合ってくれない That's a very informal way to say, won't you hang out today? 付き合ってくれない But 付き合う generally means to date. So 付き合った this is the, the past tense, which we learned a couple lessons ago,、uh, of 付き合う付き合ったと思いますが This guy is the but. Da, 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 da. ふんさて何か飲む Changing the subject here. ふん is just like, ふん Okay. さて means well. Or anyway, or well then, let's get started type of thing. さて何か飲む何か means something. That's the last section of this lesson. We'll cover that a little bit later. 飲む Informal speech. ビールを飲みます Straightforward. And that brings us to the next section, which is they said in Japanese. And we'll get to that in a minute after we check out what's happening over in chat. Hope you guys are all having a great time. If you want a cool logo and color next to your name, like Zyron has, click the join button down next to the subscribe button to check out how you can do that.、Uh, Did someone Did someone correct that? 明日雨がないと思う。I would probably say there, not ない。I would say, because 雨がある is not something you would say. You could say 雨だ。What you would say instead there would be 明日雨じゃないと思う。You could also say 雨が降らないと思う。But 明日雨だと思わない。Ah, that's a, I'm glad you said that because there's one thing that Genki mentioned. And that's when you use to omo, Japanese people in general, when they want to say they don't think something, they generally don't say to omo imasen or to omo anai. Generally, the, the sentence that comes before it is negative, plus the positive of to omo, generally speaking, right? So, what you would say there would be ame janai to omo imas or ame janai to omo. And this is Space Monkey's que-、uh, question up above. Or ashita ame ga furanai to omo. So, you'd put the sentence before to omo in the negative. Not sure whether it's okay to do negative to omo. Okay, I just answered that question. No. Usually, it isn't said to say you don't think something, you would use the short negative then to omo. Okay.、Mm-hmm. Thanks, Donnie. <laughs> Already answered. I just discovered Genki because I teach 10 year, 8, and 5 year olds the book. Nothing is wrong grammatically, but you'd be speaking writing like foreigners using the language. Yes, the book is not wonderful, July. I completely agree. And that's actually why I am doing it because so many people use Genki, but. and Particularly chapter three, where they teach you how to conjugate into the mas form, was really, really bad, and people were having a hard time understanding it. So I decided I needed to do a video on that lesson. But I figured if I was going to do that, I might as well just do the whole book. And that's how this channel was born. So, yeah, there's a lot of things that are confusing about the book, so I make these lessons to make those things a little less confusing, hopefully. Cheers, Danny. Yeah, I've never used negative. Okay, good. That's interesting. That happens in English too at work, especially. Managers saying, I think we should do, then they just mean do. I guess it softens it. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. That does happen in English sometimes. I thought futa is ancient for two. Futats, futari. So, futats, so futa is the, the Japanese reading of it. It's still the, the current reading of, you know, of two. Ni is the Japanese,、uh, the Chinese reading, I think, the onyomi, and the kunyomi is fu, futa for two. So, ancient Japanese, it was read as ha. I, or ha, ha, 
What was it again? We looked that up a while ago in another lesson because someone asked about it. Ha ta chi wa ne. Ju wa ta ni naru de. Chi wa mukashi no sai de shita de sho. De ni wa ha. Ha. Ha tsu da ったっけ Ha tsu. なんでしたっけでも、は、ちょっと調べてくれるごめんね。I think it was just は though. 山は綺麗だと思います。Sounds better.Yes. 山は綺麗だと、あ、instead of 山が綺麗だと思います。山は綺麗だと思います。Yeah, if you're talking about、uh, mountains in general, right? But if I'm talking about this mountain in particular, would we not say 山がき、この山が綺麗だと思います。I guess. はい。はたが。あ、はた。はた was 20 in ancient Japanese. But たは10だったんじゃないあ、そうそうそう。そうそう。た is 10. たそうだからはは2だった昔。うん、うん、そうそう。昔っていうか、まあ、イレギュラーリーディングだと思う。あ、oh, wasn't a regular reading. But, that, but I think you found a historical post about it and that は was in ancient Japanese was the reading of 2. It's what you told me five, five or six months ago.、うんわさびは嫌いせず。That last sentence about wasabi, can that be translated to as I think wasabi is nice, not spicy? Yes, it could be. 4年生 You tend to say 4年生結婚するの早い、早くない Yeah, definitely. But that's not a grammar point that we've covered yet. So, 早くない using a negative to suggest that something is a certain way. We haven't covered that yet. But yeah, that would obviously be more natural. Is there a way to say I don't think in Japanese or is it always by negating whatever comes before to omo? It's going to be neg- negating whatever comes before it. But you can say to omo a nai. You can say it. Like if someone says, don't you think this? You could say something, something, to omo a nai. Sate, hardly, really? I hear sate used all the time, especially when people are leading groups and stuff like that.、Uh, maybe it's a regional thing, but I hear it here in Nagano, sate, all the time. Like a lot. You don't hear it much? I do. And you do hear it a lot, yeah? Maybe it's a regional thing, but I hear sate used a lot, July. At least here in Nagano. Is there a way to say I don't think? Oh, yeah, okay, I already answered that. Ame j a n a i It says unavailable for purchase on the join button. Really? Hmm. There's three people who have joined. Maybe it's regionally locked. Unless I don't have it turned off. Turned on. YouTube Studio. Huh? They're all live. It might be a regional thing. Sorry about that. But thank you for even con- clicking on it. あの新しく大,ん大きいで現代なビルがとてもどうもどうも I'm not exactly sure what you want to say there. That video correcting chapter three is why I'm here, says our key person. That's why a lot of people have come here, and I'm, I'm happy it was helpful to people. Hi, なんでしょうか Hi, えっとやっぱり初初初初が初が二十日あ、そうだね。はつかね。はい。はうん。はね。はは、にね。Yeah, okay. We've confirmed that は is another reading of the に。of two, I mean. <laughs> uh, same, same, same. A Genki study group、um, in discussed how bad that lesson was, and someone linked to that video. Nice. Thank you to that person. You just have to learn how to count depending on shapes, materials of objects. Agreed. But that's really hard for beginners. So eventually they pick it up. But in the beginning, you know, you learn it little by little. We don't happen to be in the same Genki group, do we? Ooh. Sate, on TV and formal. Fair enough. I hear it quite a bit in person, though. But maybe I'm just in more formal situations than most people a lot of the time. All right, guys. So, moving on to Carpe Diem has joined. Welcome to Tokini Senpuki. Carpe Diem has become a member. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Now you've got that. Cool little symbol next to your name, too. Awesome. So they said in Japanese, thank you, Carpe Diem. They said is this used the same way as omo. We use the to particle after an informal sentence with itteita. So, Genki covers two ways of saying this down in the footnotes, right? It's not actually covered in the actual lesson, but I just want to mention that to iu is actually they said, right? But 
to itte itta, they say to itte imashita, which is the formal version of this, is the te iru form of to you, right? The verb you is say or said. To you means someone said. But using to you or to itta, which is the past tense of you, is generally used for something that you didn't hear yourself. So something that you heard someone said, or something that you read in a book that someone said, like a quote from a famous person in history, if you're quoting Jesus or something, you would use to you, or well, you'd use to imashita, right? But if you're repeating something that you heard someone say in person, you're going to use the te iru form of you. So to itte ta, or to itte itta. That's informal version, and to itte imashita is the formal version. So here are some examples. Barbecue wo suru to itte imashita. He said he will do a barbecue. Barbecue wo suru to itte imashita. So you've got the informal version of a sentence. Barbecue wo suru, and to itte imashita. He said he will do a barbecue. Now you wouldn't say to imashita here, unless maybe you read. On a sign somewhere that Ando-san said that he was going to do a barbecue next week. Maybe in that situation you might say Ando-san ma barbecue wo suru to imashita. Maybe, but when you heard it yourself, to itte imashita. So that's why we're using the teiru form here. And from here on out, I'm going to use the formal version, which is itte imashita. It's actually easier to say that than itte itta. And as I mentioned earlier, teiru form. Most people, when they're in spoken Japanese, drop that e. So it would probably be to itte ta, right? Okay, moving on to the next sentence, we have daishu wa hareru to itte imashita. They said next week will be sunny. They said next week will be sunny. Daishu wa hareru to itte imashita. Our next sentence, oops, our next sentence is party ga tanoshikatta to itte imashita. She said the party was fun. Party ga tanoshikatta to itte imashita. So you'll notice here we've got Suru in its, you know, dictionary form. Hareru, which is to be sunny or to be clear, in its uh, dictionary form, and we've got tanoshikatta in its um, it's the past tense of the adjective, but informal. There's no des, right? Tanoshikatta to itte imashita. She said the party was fun, and that's it for that. That's just it's it's pretty straightforward. If you've got to omo down, you've got to itte imashita down. It's just a little bit hard to get it out of your mouth in the beginning. So let's go into the dialogue. First, I'll read it slowly. Then, at normal speed, we'll go over the meaning and I'll get to your questions in chat. Biru ga nai. So desu ka. Dakara ando san wa hayaku kaidimashita ne. Dame mo tabe ni iku to itte itta to omotta. Biru mo. 買いに行くと言っていました。そっか。はい、full speed。ビールがない。そうですか。だから安藤さんは早く帰りましたね。ラーメンも食べに行くと言っていたと思った。うう。ビールも買いに行くと言っていました。そっか。See Anthony just became a member. Thank you so much for becoming a Toki ni Senpuki. By the way, Senpuki means fan. This kind of fan, but I just thought I'd use it as a sort of a pun. Welcome to the club. Thank you for joining YouTube memberships. Appreciate it. So let's go over the meanings. Biru ga nai. There is no beer. Straightforward, right? If that's not straightforward for you yet, you probably should go back to, I think it's lesson two. We covered, it might even be lesson one. We covered aru and nai. So desu ka? Is that so? Dakara ando san wa hayaku kaidimashita ne. That's why Dakara Ando san went home so fast, isn't it? So, this is a continuation, obviously, from last week's conversation. That's why Ando san went home so fast, isn't it? Dame mo tabe ni iku to itte itta to motta. Ooh, that's a long one. So, I combined said and thought into one sentence, and you can do that. You just add another to particle to the end of the informal version of to itte itta.、Uh, you could also maybe, like, I heard 
B さん told A さんです。So you could say, 行くと言ったと思った。In that sense, you could use a non te iru form if you wanted to. And I think it, the meaning would still be intact, it would be fine. But I wanted, to, I wanted a mouthful for this sentence. So, ramen mo tabe ni iku to itte itta to omotta. On the Patreon, on the、uh, listening and shadowing exercise, I used itta to omotta to make it a little bit simpler. Actually, it was a mistake, but it's not the point. I thought he said that he was going to eat ramen. Biru mo kai ni iku to itte imashita. This mo is that he also said, basically, it's, it's, it's modifying this. ビールも買いに行くと言っていました。He also said he would go to buy beer. そっか。そっか is a shortened informal version of そうですか。そっか。Oh, I see, basically. And that brings us to how to say please don't do something in Japanese. And thank you, Radclaw1, for becoming a member. Welcome to the Tokini Senpuki Club. I really、I'm, I like those badges. I'm glad I, I'm glad I went out of my way and. And made those look cool. I kind of want one next to my name too. <laughs> But anyway, thank you. Yuki says, Wow, arigato gozaimasu. Thank you. Yes, arigato gozaimasu. Hontoni. Thank you for becoming members. So cool. Last week, Zyron asked if I, if I could make memberships on my channel. And I thought I couldn't until I had 30,000 members,、uh, subscribers. And then three days later, YouTube added the membership to my channel. Is someone that works at YouTube watching this stream right now? Is that how that happened? Regardless. Thank you. Keckles! Good to see you. Welcome to the stream. How's it going? Keckles is also a member here.、Uh, I am now very curious to know more. Yeah, so Yuki looked it up again, and ha is another reading of ni. And I think it's from older Japanese.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's from more long, long time ago. Tu was read as ha, the kanji, right? So that's where it comes from. And it's still preserved in words like hatachi and hatsuka. Which is the 20th of the month and stuff like that. Why do you guys study derivatives in high school? In Brazil, calculus is just studied in university. We didn't always study calculus. Calculus, when I was a kid, I feel like was more for people who were trying to advance, like place in advanced classes. Or maybe that was Calc 2. I can't I don't think Calc 1 was required. I feel like it was an elective. But if you had taken calculus, it, it gave you a leg up when you were trying to get into university. But I don't know, it might be required now in high school. I'm not really sure. Remember to like the video, guys. We're only at 30 out of 48 viewers. Yes, thank you, Radclaw. Remember to thumbs up. Please attack the thumbs up button. It helps get this stream out here so that other people can find it. And maybe get some help as well. And thank you guys all for being here so much. And thank you to my new Tokini Senpuki members. We are working, for those of you who aren't aware of the Discord, on the Discord channel, there's a link down in the description to that. We are currently working on an emoji competition for the membership. So members are able to use, they've got that little badge next to their name, and they also are able to use custom emoji for in chat. We don't have any yet because we're running a competition. Over on the Discord for the first five emoji to be added to the Tokini Andy Senpuki membership program. Even if you don't plan on becoming a member ever, you still might be able to have one of your own handmade emoji included in the membership program if you join the competition over at the Discord. So check that out if you have any graphic design skills, or even if you don't have any graphic design skills. That's cool too. People just making things in paint, I'm okay with that as well. And eventually, we're going to do a whole Ando san series as well. Calculus wasn't required when I was in school, and it was mostly for people who wanted to pursue university studies in something relevant. The highest math I ever took was pre calculus. Yes, that's, that's what happened for me too. Pre calculus, I feel like, was, was required. I can't remember. But I definitely took Calc 1 in high school as well because I wanted to study computer science. Calculus was a worthless class for me as a comp sci major. <laughs> We've talked about this in Discord how calculus is what ruined my calc sci ma、uh, comp sci major. Made me have to, have to switch to IT. My specialty was something totally unmathematical. Word. All right, so it doesn't look like we have too many questions or any questions about To Iyu. So we're going to go ahead and move on to Please Don't 
in Japanese. Please don't in Japanese is... It's pretty easy. So all you have to do is you take the V negative. Now this is not the V negative stem. It's actually the whole verb. So tabenai, for example. You add de to the end of that, plus kudasai. Now, I think of this as a separate conjugation personally. This is how I like to think of it. It makes it easier for me to use it. Things like, let's go over some examples, isoga nai de. Now, I made the de a different color today just to make it easier to stand out because we just learned the, the negative form. So, isoga nai is the negative of hurry. But I think of it as isoga nai de. It's like the te form, the negative te form of verbs. So, it's a request. Isoga nai de is a request in the same way that isoi de is a positive request. So, isoga nai de is a negative request. So it's like the negative te form. It's like that. The, the, like, the reality of this, whether it's actually a de particle coming after nai, whatever, I don't know. But it's always nai de at the end of verbs when you're doing this, this request to not do something. So I think of it as the negative te form of verbs. So, isoga nai de kudasai. Isoga nai de kudasai. Please don't hurry. Hashiranai de kudasai. So if you've already learned the nai, the informal negative, you already know how to do this. You just add de kudasai. Sutenai de kudasai. Please don't throw it away. Some more complicated examples. We've got koko de oyoganai de kudasai. Please don't swim here. One thing I'll mention really quick is that last week, I think, or two weeks ago, we covered a very, very formal way of telling people they can't do something, which was, I think it was, uh, something ikemasen, uh, tabete wa ikemasen. That was what we covered, right? Te wa ikemasen. So that was a very, very formal way of forbidding something. Maybe you'd see it on a sign, or if you were giving instructions in class on things you weren't going to tolerate throughout the year. Kurasu de tabete wa ikemasen. You can't eat in class, or if you're very angry at someone and you're, you're telling them that they must not do that. That's what you'd use, right? But in less formal situations, you would say something like this. Oyoganai de kudasai. Don't swim here. Shashin wo toranai de kudasai. Please don't take a picture or don't take pictures here. Presento wo akenai de kudasai. Please don't open the present. Meng, thank you for becoming a men member and joining the Tokini Senpuki. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. VPN works. Oh, it must be region locked. That's weird. But thank you. Welcome. Four new members tonight, guys. You are all are the best. Seriously, thank you. Yes. Akenai de kudasai. Please don't open the present. So let's go ahead and jump into the conversation piece. First, I'll read it slowly, full speed. I'll go over the meaning, and then we'll get to your questions. Ja, biru o. Kainiku a ikanai de kudasai. Daijobu kombini wa chikai. Ya kinishinai de kudasai. Wine wo nomimas. Full speed. Daijobu. Ja, beer o kainiku a ikanai de kudasai. Daijobu kombini wa chikai. Ya. Alright, let's go over the English translation of that. Well then, or well. Shall I go and buy beer? We covered something ni iku a couple couple weeks ago in one of the other lessons. And that's just go and do something. In this case, it's go and buy beer. Ah, ikanai de kudasai. That's this section. Ikanai de kudasai. Please don't go. Ikanai de kudasai. Daijoubu. It's okay. Konbini wa chikai. The convenience store is close. Ya. No, 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 no. Kinishinai de kudasai. Wine mo nomimas. Kinishinai de is actually sort of like a set phrase that means don't worry about it. Or don't worry about me. Ki. Ni shinai de. 
but it's also it's using that de kudasai shinai de kudasai form. So I figured I'd use it here, and you could learn a little nice new set phrase that means don't worry about it. Kini shinai de kudasai. Wine mo nomimasu. I'll drink wine. Walter Ditto, thank you for joining the Tokini Senpuki and becoming a member. Thank you so much. I've got all kinds of cool green badges showing up in chat. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for helping support Tokini Andy. And just for you guys who can't become members, and I'm comp that's fine. I don't don't feel pressured to do that. I appreciate you just being here, hanging out in chat, asking questions, and and learning learning along with me and with everyone here. It's great to have you here. And I, I appreciate the support of members and patrons as well so much. And if you'd like to support in some other way, like something that really helps this channel is just something simple, like hitting the like button, hitting the subscribe and the bell, and sharing this with other people who you know studying Japanese. So don't feel like that's the only way you can help out Tokini Andy. But I do very much appreciate those of you who have helped support this channel and are making both myself and Yuki able to do this more and more and more and more and more and encouraging us to keep making more and more lessons and hopefully help you guys learn Japanese even faster. But thank you so much. Thank you, Walter. <laughs> All right, so that brings us to nominal. Did I cover that? Did I cover those sentences? I did. OK. That brings us to nominalizing sentences in Japanese, which is basically turning full sentences into nouns so that you can modify them and work with them like you would regular nouns. So let's go ahead and jump into the chat. Before we go over to there, how are we doing on time tonight? We're at 10.23. Not too bad. We've got two more sections, I think. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, let's see. Calculus wasn't required. I think Yuki's badge should be an emoji. Yuki's badge? Ah, that'd be cool. I don't know what situation we'd use it in, but we could make that into an emoji. The more members there are, the more emoji spaces get opened. So I think we've got five new members tonight, which means we're at eight members, which means we should have six or seven slots available. So after the competition, we'll be able to add more and more. So there's going to be Andosan faces, and maybe we could do a badge as a as an emoji too. That could be pretty cool. I don't know what situation you'd use it in, but. To the mon Monbaku Gaku Show scholarship uh, derivatives are. Uh, Mambuka Gaku Show. Mambuka mm, Gaku Show. Scholarship derivatives are needed to the for the test we need to answer. Oh, really? Hmm. Because it probably isn't what you would expect most. As a comp sci major, I'm so happy to be done with calculus classes, but sadly, as an econ minor, it comes up all the time there. <laughs> Ooh. I think the negative Tay form explanation is good. Thank you. Yeah, it seems that makes most sense to me. That's the way I like to think about it. Whether it's it's perfectly historically correct. I'm not positive, but I like it. Oyasumi minasan jōzu ni bun bun oshi oshimashou. Thank you, Tobin. Thanks. Have a great night. Thank you for being here. Woo, VPN. I had to use my VPN also. Huh, that's weird. I wonder why it's region locked. That's kind of funny. I'm not honestly sure what nai is historically. The very ancient negative was zu. Ra tabezu tabezu ni ikimasu, for example. I'll go without eating, I think. It's probably related to newt, which appears in some older texts. Yeah, you can hear that. And mai. Mai can also be used in older stuff, but which can also be used, also be a perfective subject. Uh, it's going to be always be de, unlike the te form conjugation, where it's, it's always de. Nai de. So remember, you're adding it to the end of nai. Right? So it, like that ending will never change. The, the negative informal of all verbs will always end in nai. So it'll always be de as well. Incidentally, this new suffix is probably related to the particle no, which originally probably meant that is which is in the context of x, which is y, at least according to some historical linguists. In interesting. New is suffix is probably related to the particle no. Like as in no comes maybe from that new suffix. Daijoubu. Arigato. Thank you. Go to his Patreon. It's worth it, says Walter. Thank you. Thank you. You're taking a... You're taking a Dan's job since he can't be here tonight as the Patreon uh, shout outer. Appreciate it. Thank you. I hear Kinishinai Day is a lot in anime. Yeah, it's very common. Okay, I've done some digging, and your analysis of a uh, nai day as a short form, sort of negative te form, is not unreasonable. The nai apparently descends from an ancient verb nahi, a conjugation of nafu. Woo. Where are you finding all this, man? Nice. 
Will you be releasing a Genki 2 series? Shivanash. I will be. As soon as I finish Genki 1, we're at lesson 8. That means we're two-thirds of the way through. So about eight weeks out from the finish line, I'll be moving directly in to Genki 2 from there. And the Patreon will also be moving on through Genki 2. And when we finish Genki 2, I'll probably take a short break, regroup, and go over some intermediate textbooks and see what I want to do next. We'll see. What does the bell do? The bell means you'll get notifications. So if you don't hit the bell next to the subscribe button, YouTube doesn't tell you when I put out new videos. They don't tell you. YouTube will only promote things on your homepage that they think you will like, not that you're subscribed to. So if you watch a lot of something, your homepage will be filled with that kind of stuff, not what you're subscribed to, which makes sense because just because you're subscribed to someone doesn't necessarily mean you want to watch them. So it makes more sense for YouTube to put things that are similar to what you normally watch on your homepage. But if you hit the notification bell and put all notifications, that means you'll get notifications on your application or on your homepage or in your Google or your YouTube notifications or depending on your settings and your email, if someone you're subscribed to posts something new. So that's what the bell does. Come to Japan would say something like, crush the like button to show support. Lately, he's been saying, throw pizza at the like button. He's trying to get that to sort of, uh, what, what's the word for it? To trend, I think. Throw some pizza at the like button. We're at concurrent viewers, 46 and 40 likes. So we're at a pretty good, pretty good, pretty good ratio there. Appreciate that, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Anytime you can, you're my favorite sensei. Don't tell Andy. I knew it. I knew it, Walter. The precise origin of this ancient Nafu auxiliary is obscure, but probably related to the ancient negative nu. Ah, okay. Naruhodo ne? Oh, it's nai de. Oh, uh oh. So that might mean. Well, the de ne? The nai is still important, I think, in that situation. The old Japanese grammar for many ways of negative kanji was really hard to learn, even for Japanese. Usually in junior high school, we study basic level after high school. Yeah, so Japanese people study ancient Japanese, and it's hard even for them, huh? Hi. I wanted to say more, but. Mm. Oh, there's, she wanted to say more. She had a lot more to write, but the limit of characters is 200, so she got stuck there. <laughs> I can gather together some resources. LOL, Walter. Thank you, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So let's go ahead and move on to nominalizing sentences in Japanese. This is a fun one. So to nominalize a sentence in Japanese, you basically take the an informal sentence, so a sentence that ends in an informal way, whether, whether it's the dictionary form of a verb or an informal conjugation of an adjective or just a noun and then we add noga plus a sentence or a word describing that sentence okay now genki does not show this second part and i'm not going to go into it much i just wanted to write it down here because many 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 people ask when they're on lesson eight whether noga is the same as kotoga or whether they should actually be using one or the other kotoga is the same thing, but kotoga, kotoga is more formal, I believe. Noga is more informal. It's a little less, like kotoga is much more formal Japanese. So informal sentence plus kotoga plus something describing the informal sentence. So the koto also nominalizes what comes before it, but it's a little bit more formal than saying noga. So here are some examples, and I'll just throw in a koto in there so you can see what I mean. So, ofuro ni hairu no ga suki. I like to take baths. The literal translation is, uh, I like getting into the bath or taking baths. You could also say, ofuro ni hairu koto ga suki. Des, suki des. You'd probably have a des there because it would probably be a more polite sentence if you're using koto. Ofuro ni hairu koto ga suki des. A little less formal. Ofuro ni hairu no ga suki. Or ski this would also be fine. Like you can you can use it in a more polite situation, but these are just the simple sentences. So that's that. Um, what was I gonna say? Yeah. So Genki does not cover koto kotoga in this lesson. They covered a, a later point. Today we just cover noga. So that's all I'm going to cover as well. Unten suru no ga jōzu. You're good at driving. Ryori o tsukuru no ga heta. <laughs> I'm not good at cooking. So, Genki also only covers in this lesson nominalizing something and then using ski, jōzu, or heta. Those are the only things in the whole lesson that it covers. 
An earlier sentence in this lesson, I used something else. I said, Kekkon suru no ga hayai. Kekkon suru no ga hayai. So the point is, whatever comes after the no ga describes something about the sentence before it. So Genki sort of presents this as coming along with ski, jozu, heta. But those are just some ways, some adjectives that you can use along with this form. You can literally put any sentence after noga and it will modify what came before the noga. Because that whole thing, this whole thing, ofudo ni hairu, unten suru, ryori o tsukuru, that is now a noun. It's a noun. So you can modify it the same way you can modify any other noun in the Japanese language when you say kotoga or noga after it. But Genki only teaches ski, jozu, and heta after these things in this lesson, so that's what I used in my example sentences. Super de kaimono suru no ga daiski. I love or really like shopping at the supermarket. You can wrote that sentence. Super de kaimono suru no ga daiski. It's true. She really likes shopping at supermarkets. Sugaku o benkyo suru no ga kirai. These are all Yuki sentences, actually. Sugaku o benkyo suru no ga kirai. I dislike studying math. So this is now a noun, right? Sugaku o benkyo suru. That's a noun. We've nominalized it. Studying math. It's like it's like turning the verb into uh, studying math, right? In English, that also nominalizes it. Yuki wa eigo hanasu no ga tottemo jōzu. Yuki's original sentence was, Yuki wa eigo hanasu no ga tottemo heta. That's what she had written here. I changed to jōzu because it's not true. She's pretty good at English. Yuki wa eigo hanasu no ga tottemo jōzu. Yuki is very good at speaking English. Nice. So let's go ahead and jump into our conversation. I'll read it slowly one time, then at full speed the second time, go over the English meaning, and then we'll get to your questions over in chat. Wine ga suki, mama suki desu. Somo somo, osake o nomu no ga suki. Osake o nomu no ga suki demo kirai demo nai desu. Boku mo soda. Full speed. Wine ga suki. Mama suki desu. Somo somo osake o nomu no ga suki. Osake o nomu no ga suki demo kirai demo nai desu. Boku mo sou da. All right, so wine ga suki. Pretty straightforward. Do you like question? Mama suki desu. I like it a bit. Mama means like so so in English. Is so so English? I don't know. Is it Japanese English? I'm not really sure. Whatever. Mama can be translated as so so. I like it a bit. Somo somo, osake o nomu no ga suki? Do you actually like to drink alcohol? Now, somo somo is a fun little word that I like to use a lot. It, in most situations, it means from the beginning or to start with, do you actually like alcohol? Or in this situation, I translate it as actually or anyway. Do you even like alcohol? Could be another way you could use it. Do you even something something, right? Somo somo would be used in that way. I use it mostly in the set in the situation like um let's see what, what was the actual translation to begin with or from the start or in the first place or originally do you even like something but in this situation it's more like anyway or after all do you even like to drink alcohol somo somo sake o nomu no ga suki do you actually even like to drink alcohol o sake o nomu no o sake o nomu no ga suki demo kirai demo nai desu this means I don't like or dislike drinking alcohol. Boku mo soda. I'm the same. Remember, soda is that way or yes. Yes, I'm the same. Boku mo soda. I am just like that. And that brings us to, oh, there's actually two more sections. We've got the subject particle ga, and then they're both pretty straightforward, though. Subject particle ga and something or anything in Japanese. And then we'll be done. So I'm just going to jump over to the questions before we jump over into the subject particle ga, because a lot of people have a lot of questions about ga. I'm not going to go into too much detail in it, because this section only covers a little bit. Do -do -do. Let's see what's happening. I prefer my home page to be random, not just things I have already seen. Yeah, 
I like randomness, but sometimes I like right now I'm pretty happy with my homepage. A lot of things show up that I actually want to watch, which never used to happen. So I don't mind what they do with it. I used to not like it so much. Um, it doesn't treat my content very well because because my stuff is so specific and it's so in depth. It's not something you generally click on on a whim. Like you're not just like I'm gonna watch some YouTube and then there's a an in depth lesson on Genki Lesson Four and you're like oh that looks like fun. <laughs> like whether it is or not is besides the point. It may, might be helpful, but it's not something that people randomly click on on their homepage. I feel like so. YouTube treats me pretty neg negatively because I don't have a very high click rate because it's so specific. But they treat me nice in other ways, like giving me memberships when I have 5,000 subscribers, so I can't complain. Teach us ancient Japanese. But I understand why they do it, because it keeps people watching, which is important for a, a company that makes all their money off people continuing to watch stuff like YouTube. I find ancient forms of languages fascinating. We don't usually study how much things worked in English, unfortunately, till maybe we get to university. Consequently, attempts at old-sounding English is often terrible if created by people who haven't studied it. There's also a huge number of misconceptions about the origin of English and what the stages of the language are properly called. But no ga and koto ga are identical in meaning, correct? Yes. Identical in meaning, it nominalizes. The no and the koto both nominalize whatever comes before it. That is very useful. I often want to say, like to do something, but I couldn't figure out how to. Now you know. I'm not sure studying ancient Japanese would do anything but confuse me right now. That's like going straight to Shakespeare or Chaucer when learning beginner English. Not fun. Good point. It's, uh, even Japan, you know, Japanese people learn it in school as well, like high school and stuff, because it helps you understand the language a little bit better. But at the very beginning, you, you need to get a bit of a foundation before you jump into it, unless that's what you're interested in. Like, if that's all you care about and you don't actually care about learning to speak the language, then there's nothing wrong with that. Pretty distinct from each other, too. So starting with one and moving to the other immediately, unless you already speak modern English well, would be awful word. Mm, nougat. It's so-so. It's okay. It's like, all right, I guess. Yeah, good point. I'll throw in Beowulf for out of confusion. Watashi no kyomi wa eiga o miru no desu. Watashi no shumi. Oh, that is shumi. Okay. Shumi wa... Watashi no shumi wa ga eiga o wa ga ii no kana. Shumi ga miru o miru no desu. I mean, yes, it's fine. It's using it a little bit differently. We usually say koto this one. Ah, uh, you'd use koto. I was corrected and said I should use koto instead of no. Is that correct? Yeah. That makes but more no, sense. No, it's fine. It, it works. Like, the no this works. But I think most people would say koto. Miru koto desu. When you're, use, when you're ending the sentence with it, right? You're ending the sentence by nominalizing whatever comes before it, and then just saying, is this thing. Most Japanese people will use koto. So, watashi no kyomi, uh, uh, shumi ga eiga o miru koto desu, is what most Japanese people would say. It works, you'll be understood, but most people will say no desu. Hey, I'm a bit late, but due to the information... Hey, wait. Hey. 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 Mm, I think I also think that wa is more natural. I also, but, one thing I was going to say is that watashi no shumi wa eigo miru koto desu is probably what it's more natural to say wa there, but the ga, it, it just emphasizes the shumi part of it. I still think wa would be more natural, so that's one other thing to keep in mind. I'm a bit late, but due to the inform informalness, you don't need to say desu ka to imply a question, correct? You just use rising intonation at the end of an informal sentence so like tabeniku with just the you know the dictionary form at the ending or the the informal conjugation and that's perfectly fine i think you already talked about it but to be sure to make the formal way of a sentence do you use informal noga formal describing form yes yes that's what you do so let's just go back up to let's go up back to another sentence uh, and I'll make it formal. Here we go. Sugaku o benkyo suru no ga kirai desu. So you just add desu, now it's a formal sentence, right? To make it a little bit more polite. So yes, you just 
the, the formalness of the sentence itself is determined by the final sentence. If that makes sense. <laughs> Whatever comes after the noga is what determines the politeness or impoliteness of the sentence. I guess not politeness or impoliteness. It's not impolite. It's the formal or informalness of the sentence. <laughs> Time for dinner. We'll catch up later. Johnny, see you later, Zyron. Thanks for joining. I can't even read Beowulf in the original. I don't think I, I think I tried once, but it wasn't an enjoyable experience. I'm back. Welcome back, Dronography. Good to see you. Oh, wrong account. Lucine is back. <laughs> Have a second subscriber from one person. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the input on my sentence, Andy. No worries. All right, so I'm going to let Yuki answer that one, and I'm going to move on to the subject particle ga because it's already 1040, and we've got two more sections to fly through. The subject particle ga. So. There's a lot of differences between ga and la, and they're very confusing. Even for Japanese people. At least hard for them to explain, because most people don't really know. For sure. It's more of a feeling for most Japanese people. This lesson in Genki comfort covers the ga particle as subject particle and just in two very distinct situations. So that's all I'm going to cover today as well. We're not going to get into too much detail because it's, it's a little bit too late for that. The two situations that it covers are adding emphasis. Yuki ga iku. Adding emphasis as in if this were an English sentence, yuki would be in all capital letters. Yuki is the one that's going to go. Yuki ga iku, right? using it to add emphasis, to specify that this is the thing that we're talking about. And used with question words. Nani ga suki? Dare ga iku? Question words like nani, uh, nani, dare, stuff like that. Doko, right? Use ga, not wa, with those, always. You're never going to use wa with nani, dare, or doko, stuff like that. You're always going to use ga. So those are the two situations that you use the ga particle. And what it's doing there is it's marking a subject. The wa sentences, those sentences with wa, like watashi wa something something, that we've used up to this point, up to lesson eight, are generally also marking the subject of the sentence, that wa particle. Like when I say watashi wa uh, ta, um, hamburger wo tabeniku, I'm going to go eat hamburgers. I'm the subject. I'm the one we're talking about. So the wa particle is also marking the subject, but it doesn't always mark the subject. Ga can also mark a subject. So that's what this part's about, but the main points it covers are that when you use ga here instead of wa, yuki wa iku is perfectly fine sentence. Yuki's a subject, she's also probably a new topic to the sentence, we've just started talking about her. Using ga, it's going to add emphasis. Yuki's the one that's going. Especially like if you don't know who's going. Who's going to go? Yuki ga iku. Yuki's the one that's going to go. Oops, and there's our furigana. What's up? Hey, one second, guys. Oh, I, it's there. I just forgot to click. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so our example sentences. Avocado ga suki desu. I like avocados, right? So that's just our normal suki desu sentence. You could use wa here, but this is saying that I like avocados. Avocado ga suki desu. Avocados is what I like. Dare ga ninki desu ka? Who is popular? Dare ga ninki desu ka? So this is a question word. Dare. Always gonna have ga. Ando san ga dai ninki desu. I guess. Ando san ga dai ninki desu. Ando san is the one that's very popular. Ando san is very popular. Not anyone else. Ando san ga dai ninki desu. Ando san wa dai ninki desu is a perfectly fine sentence, but it's just talking about. Ando -san. Maybe we've are, we're already talking about Ando-san. Like, yeah, Ando-san wa dai ninki desu ne. So we've are, we're already talking about Ando-san. So I'm taking back what I said earlier. If we've already breached the topic, I think wa is, wa is what we would use. One second, I just need to actually look at something. I, I always get mixed up with this. Yes. So we've already been talking about Ando-san. And Ando-san wa dai ninki desu. It's something we would talk about. We're already talking about Ando-san. I want to say he's really popular. Ando-san wa dai ninki. But if I want somebody's wondering who's popular, maybe they ask something like this. Dare ga ninki desu ka? And you don't know that it's Ando-san that's really popular. You think it's Andy or Yuki or something. No, no, no. Ando-san is very popular. This ga is going to add that emphasis you need. 
。安藤さんが大人気です。安藤さん is very popular. Here's some more complicated examples. Here we've got a question word attached to another word. We're using the no particle. Say, nan no ongaku. But because we have this question marker, or the question word, we also have to use ga. Nan no ongaku ga ski desu ka? Also, we're saying ski. So, what kind of music do you like? Nan no. So, when we say nan, when we have the no particle after this kanji, it's generally read as nan. Not nani. So, nan no ongaku ga ski desu ka? What kind of music do you like? Natsu wa suika ga daisuki. In the summer, I like watermelon a lot. I like watermelon a lot during the summer. Suika,、uh, natsu wa suika ga ski. Suika. Not necessarily other fruits. I, I really like watermelon. Itoko ga nihon ni kimashita. So, maybe someone is wondering which one of the people in your family came to Japan. And I'm going to tell you, emphasize that it's my cousin or his cousin or her cousin or their cousin. Itoko ga nihon ni kimashita. So that's adding emphasis to the person. You could say, Itoko wa nihon ni kimashita. Oh, my cousin came to Japan. Just randomly, right? Or if we're already talking about your co- my cousin. Like someone knows about my cousin. We're talking about my cousin. So I say, Hmm, Itoko wa nihon ni kimashita. But if someone's wondering who came to Japan, Itoko ga nihon ni kimashita. My cousin visited Japan. All right, here is our conversation. Go through it slowly one time, read it full speed, and then I'll get to your questions in a few minutes. O sake wa nani ga suki desu ka? Talking about sake a lot tonight. I haven't drank in a while. Maybe that's why. Biru ga suki. Chinami ni e san no kyodai no dare ga okinawa ni itte imasu ka? Long sentence. i m o t o g a i t t e i r u y o i n a Full speed. O sake wa nani ga suki desu ka? Beer ga suki. Chinami ni A san no kyodai no dare ga okinawa ni itte imasu ka? i m o t o g a i t t e i r u y o i n a Alright, let's go over that. Line by line. O sake wa nani ga suki desu ka? What kind of alcohol do you like? Remember, o sake is. Oops, oops. Osake means generally any type of alcohol. It just means alcohol. What kind of alcohol do you like? Osake wa nani ga suki desu ka? Biru ga suki. I like beer. Straightforward. Okay, this is, a, this is a long sentence. Kind of complicated, so let's go over it. I'm just going over just this sentence in this slide. Chinami ni. So this is a fun one. It's not introduced in Genki yet, but I really like it, so I wanted to tell you guys because I like to say, by the way. I like to say, by the way. There's a couple ways you could say it. One way is tokoro de, but I like to say chinami ni, and that just means by the way. Chinami ni e san no kyodai no dare. So let's stop there. E san no kyodai no dare. So that's A is the person I'm talking to. Siblings. Who? So which one of your siblings, basically, is what this would translate as, or who of your siblings? Who of A san siblings? Ga. So that's emphasis which one, basically. We're emphasizing that. Que- well, we have the question word dare, so we have to use ga. Okinawa ni itte imasu ka? Remember, the teiru form of iku implies that the person went and still is there, or is exist- this existing in that place right now. Itte imasu ka? By the way, which one of your siblings is in. Oops, I forgot is. Which one of your siblings is in Okinawa? Which one of your siblings is in Okinawa? So they went to and are in Okinawa. Imoto ga itte iru yo. So that's the situation that you would use ga instead of wa. Because specifically, this person is in Okinawa. My younger sister is there. Imoto ga itte iru yo. Ina. Ina is different from ine. Ine means, oh, that's good. Ina. It, it means that's good, but it implies that you're jealous. It implies that you wish that it was you. Ina. So I, I translated that, that as lucky. But it's like good, but with jealousy attached. Ina. I want to be there too. So our final section tonight is something or nothing, or how to say something and nothing in Japanese. So let's go ahead and jump into the chat. The oldest 
attestation of something that could be called English is from around 900. The Tale of Genji. Ah, yeah. Hmm? Tale of, I think I've heard that before, which I imagine is not intelligible to modern readers. Gatenwa, it is confusing for Japanese people. I speak to someone Japanese and they cannot explain it fully. No. That's why you can actually find articles in Japanese on wa and the differences between wa and ga for Japanese people that are pages and pages long because nobody knows. In some grammatical treatments, I've encountered a rough explanation that ga indicates the subject, whether or not it is the focus, and wa indicates focus specifically. That's one way. There's other, there's, there's lots of little nuances with wa and ga. That's the main one, but... That's the feeling I got after watching Kiridali's video on ga and wa. Hey Andy, just popping in to say hi, not this far yet, but see you then. See you then, it's just Kev. Thanks for stopping by. Good to see you. Dronography, because after speaking to Japanese people, ga is also used for specific words. Yes. And it's not original to her. Tai Kim says something similar. Yeah, those are those are definitely the main differences, right? Those are the main obvious ones. But there's sometimes it pops up and it's like, why is it ga here? And Japanese people are like, mm, mm, because it feels right. I thought we always use ga with preference adjectives anyway. Not always. That's the problem. Not always. As a learner, it, it's a good rule to use ga with preference adjectives. But if you say wa instead, I can't remember. Why would you say tabem ano ringo wa suki da? Sono bai wa emphasis ga ringo ni suiteるんだね. Yeah, see, this is where it gets this is where it gets freaking messy, because if you use wa instead of ga with a preference verb like ski or preference adjective, I guess with like ski, that emphasizes the thing. Dingo ga ski means I like apples. Ah, dingo ga ski makes it sound like I don't like other things. I like apples. Dingo wa ski means I also like, okay, yeah, never mind. I, I remember now, I remember now. So ga is, yes, it's more specific. So ringo ga ski means I like apple specifically. And ringo wa ski is maybe if someone gives you a set of things, this is, this is, I remember now. If someone gives you a set of things like, okay, which do you like? Do you like apples or oranges? You would say, eh, ringo wa, ah, no, 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 no. We've got apples, oranges, bananas, this and that and the other thing. What do you guys like? Ma, ringo aski. I like apples, but it also sounds like I maybe like other things too in that situation. But if I were to say in that situation, ringo aski, it means I don't necessarily like the other things. I like apples. But if I say ringo aski, it means I like other things too, but I also like apples. So, but it's weird. It's not like it's not precise. It's not precise enough to. So. Over time, hopefully I'll be able to explain it better and maybe someday I'll do my own video that makes sense. <laughs> Ando-san is contented wisteria. Yep, pretty much. Or safe at wisteria. That sounds vaguely familiar. When we say e wa ski, I was told it means subject likes a only and no one else. Is that right? Gyaku janai. Andi wa ski wa andi dake ga ski ってこと a is not Okay, so my, my explanation before... So, 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 so. Okay, I'm sorry. My explanation before was messy, was wrong. You're right, see antonym. You're correct. No, no, if, if that's the case, then my explanation before was wrong. So I've explained it differently in other times. See, even my understanding of Wanga is not good. That's why I didn't want to get into it too much right now. And I'm getting too far into it. So I'm going to stop at this. Yes, see antonym. That's correct. A wa ski means you don't like other things. It means you only like A. So what I just said before about apples and oranges is incorrect. Dingo ga ski means you like other things as well. Dingo wa ski means you only like apples if there's other things available. So if you've got 10 things and you say, ah, dingo wa ski, it means you, sounds like you don't like the other things. So what I said before is false. It's the opposite. If you use wa, it means you just like that thing. Sorry. Ando-san is an ikemen attractive voice, says Dronagari. Thank you. Ando-san wa ikemen desu. Would it work if... Mm. Mm. Right, right, right. So yeah. 
Andosan is an Ikemen, not anyone else. That's what that means. Would it work if B-san omitted the subjects? Basically, Kyodai no dare ga Okinawa ni itte iru? Yeah, that'd be fine. That'd be fine in the question. You don't necessarily need to say A-san no Kyodai no dare ga Okinawa ni itte iru. You could just say Kyodai no dare ga Okinawa ni itte iru? Perfectly fine. Andy-sensei de, de ne? Andy-sensei ga daisuki. Arigato, Radclaw. Ore mo daisuki da yo. Hmm. That means like other people as well. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, we're not going to go into that anymore. We're done with Wanga for tonight. I'm sorry. We'll do another thing about that someday when I understand it better because I still don't have a fully articulated understanding of Wanga. I'm going to be over here reading Beowulf, less confusing. Exactly. So don't worry about it. The things we covered today for Wanga, right? emphasizing that my sister went to somewhere and with what words like nani dare stuff like that i i fully intended to not get into the differences between ga and wa here but i did anyway i i always do because it's fun to try but instead i just end up confusing people sorry about that <laughs> we got a little bit too sidetracked. Okay, so our last section tonight is something or nothing. Saying something and nothing in Japanese is like this. We use the word nani ka, which means something, and nani mo plus a negative, which means nothing. Nani ka, something. Nani mo plus a negative, means nothing. So, for example, we've got nani ka tabemashou ka. Shall we eat something? Nani ka wakaru? I understand some things. Nani ka wakaru? Nani ka wakaru? So maybe for our, our conversation just now, ma and ga. Nani ka wakaru? I understand some thing. Nani ka wakaru? I understand some of it. Not all of it, but some of it. Nani ka wakaru? That's how you would use that one. But if I were to say, Nani ka wakaru? That's kind of asking, do you get it a little bit? Do you sort of get it? Nani ka wakaru? Nani mo kawarimasen. Nothing will change. So we have the negative conjugation here. Nani mo kawarimasen. <laughs> if I were to say nani mo wakarimasen, I understand nothing. That also works. Nani mo wakarimasen. I don't understand anything. That would also be a good sentence for our ga and wa particle conversation there. Nani mo wakarimasen. Some more complicated sentences. We have Tsugi no shumatsu wa nan ni mo yote wa ga arimasen. Tsugi no shumatsu wa nan ni mo yote ga arimasen. I don't have any plans next weekend. Nan ni mo yote ga arimasen. As long as that last verb is negative, you can use nan ni mo uh, to modify nouns. It doesn't have to directly modify a verb. Nan ni mo yote, it's plans, ga arimasen. Yoru gohan wa Nani ka tsukuru ne? I'll make something for dinner, okay? That ne is like, okay? Yoru gohan wa nani ka tsukuru ne? I'll make something. Ima nani ka kikoemashita ka? Did you hear something? Or this is actually the, um, what's the word for that? I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but it's a. Uh, can you? Can you? Potential. So were you able? To hear something. Kikoe, kikoeru means can you hear. So we haven't covered that conjugation yet. Don't worry about it. But ima nani ka kikoemashita ka? Were you able to hear something just now? All right. Let's jump into the final, final conversation for tonight. We'll read it slowly. And then full speed. Cover it line by line. And I'll get to the final questions. And we'll get to question time. Okinawa no miyage wa... Nani ka hoshi? Ya, daijoubu desu. Nani mo hoshiku arimasen. Saraishu asobi ni kuru. Nani ka motte kuru kana? Ii desu ne. Full speed. Okinawa no omiyage wa nani ka hoshi? Ya, daijoubu desu. Nani mo hoshiku arimasen. Saraishu asobi ni kuru. Nani ka motte kuru ka na? Ii desu ne. Alright, let's jump over that line by line. We've got Okinawa no omiyage. 
souvenirs from Okinawa. Wa nani ka hoshi? Do you want something? Hoshi means to want. It's a, it's an adjective that means want. And when you ask someone if they want a thing, you use this. Hoshi nani ka hoshi? Do you want something? Ya no. Daijoubu desu. It's okay. Nani mo hoshiku arimasen. So you conjugate it like a the adjective an adjective. It is an adjective. Hoshiku arimasen. This is the very polite version of hoshiku nai. Hoshiku arimasen. Nani mo. I don't want anything. Or I want nothing would also be a way to put that. I don't want anything in the negative is another way to translate that. Saraishu asobi ni kuru. Nani ka motte kuru ka na. Saraishu means the week after next. Asobi ni kuru means he's gonna come come to visit or come to hang out or come to have fun. Asobi ni kuru. Nani ka motte kuru ka na. Ka na means I wonder when you use it at the end of a sentence. Means, hmm, I wonder. It's the main way to use it. Wonder if. Nani ka motte kuru means bring something, but I wonder if she'll bring something. Nani ka motte kuru ka na. So you can throw that at the end of your sentences to mean you wonder. I desu ne. That's good or nice. And that brings us to question time. The question for today is Nani o suru no ga suki desu ka? What do you like to do? An example answer to that question would be Unten suru no ga suki or Unten suru no ga suki desu. I like to drive. So that's the question for today. And I'll jump into your questions. I can answer questions about the last section a lot better than I can about the wa and ga section. So <laughs> there's that. Hi, Gian desu. Good to see you. Thanks for dropping in. Alright, I'm gonna be over here. I'll be over here. I wasn't confused, so no need to apologize. That's good. I'm glad. I did make a very false statement, though, so there's that. Can you say, Nani ka tabemasu ka? I will eat. Ah, Nani ka tabemasu. Ah, I will eat something. Yeah. Um, that question mark confused me. Can you say, Nani ka tabemasu? Yes, that's fine. Nani ka tabemasu? Yeah, I'll eat something. Is Nani ka and Nani mo used like adverbs? Yes. And it can also be used as an adjective. Nani mo tab, nani mo yote ga nai, right? In that says sentence, it's nani mo yote ga nai. Yote wa nani mo nai. Yeah, it's used as an adverb, I guess. I think actually, maybe it is an adverb. Let's go ahead and look up the classification. Nani mo, nothing. Adverb. Yes, they're both adverbs. I should have known that off the top of my head. Remember to check out the Patreon, guys. Great content there, especially shadowing practice for speaking, says Radclaw1. Thank you, Radclaw. Thank you for becoming members today, guys. We got five new members, five new Tokini Senpuki tonight. Click that join button down below if you want to help support the channel and get a cool little A Hiragana for Tokini Andy channel badge right next to your name there. And the green name, after one month, it changes color, and so on and so forth. Thank you so much, and check out the Patreon if, you, if you're so inclined. And uh, share this video with anyone you know studying Japanese, if you know anyone studying Japanese. When I first learned ga, I had hoped the Japanese government would just remove it from their language. <laughs> Says Noah. Nice. Be nice. Terebi game wo suru no ga suki desu. Nice. Nice, Danny. Good one. Anime wo miru no ga suki desu. Says Patrick. Nice one. Good. Good sentence. Can you explain the difference between using motte kuru to bring a thing and motte iku to take a thing? Same as those English sentences. So I actually had a conversation with uh, a teacher at my high school the other day about this exact same thing. So motte kuru, right, is, for example, the person is carrying something and they're coming towards me. So in English, we would say bring it. They're bringing it to me or please bring me your phone or please bring me a tissue. I mean, literally, I might say get me a tissue. But if I were to say that Yuki is bringing me a tissue, right? In Japanese, I'd say, motte kiteru or motte kuru. There's tissue. So, same as bring, right? But if I want, I want her to take the tissues over there, in English, we're saying take, so take the tissue over there, we'd say motte iku because motsu, mo, the, it's the te form of motsu, right? It's to hold. Motsu. So, the te and then the iku, it's, it's the te that allows you to 
add another sentence after it. It's basically the connective te. So, motte nani ka suru. Motte, you do something after that. In this case, it's go or come. Right? So, I carry and come, or I carry and go. Bring and take. That's probably the. I should have just started with that. It's the te form of motsu, which is to carry or to hold. And then you've got go or come. Which is the difference between bring and take. There you go. Hope that explains it. Thank you for the link, Yuki. Guitar wo hiku no ga daisuki desu, says Patrick. Nice. I like playing guitar too, but I'm terrible at it. Terebi game o oh, I ah, terebi game wo suru no ga suki desu, says study disu. Good to see you tonight. On the Patreon, great content, says RT person. Thank you. Thank you, patrons. Thank you, members. And thank you, everyone that hangs out in chat. It's so good to do these streams with you guys. If it weren't for you guys, they wouldn't be nearly as fun. Archery suru no ga suki. Ooh, nice. Archery could also be called kudo. Kudo is Japanese for archery. Kudo. I don't know if kudo is just Japanese archery, though. Slightly different. It's kudo. Okay, so the bamboo one. But if you're using the technical one, is archery. Oh, I didn't know that. I learned something new tonight. So archery is the technical, like the hunting art bow. And then the bamboo, like the very stylish, thick, formal, almost ritualistic Japanese archery is kudo. I've done that once. It was fun. Taberu no ga suki, says Lin. Nice. Woman right after Yuki's heart. In my heart as well. Nihongo benkyo suru no ga suki desu, says arty person. Nice. Hana wo... How do I read that again? Nioi suru no ga suki desu. Nioi suru no ga suki desu. Ooh, nice. But you would probably... Nyo, yeah, the verb, right? You can use that as a verb. So you could say, Hana wo nyo no ga suki desu. You could say. Or you could say, Hana no nioi o kagu no ga suki desu. Hana no nioi o kagu no ga suki desu. So kagu is to smell. Nioi o kagu is to smell a smell. So hana no nioi, to smell the smell of a, of a flower. But nio is just the is the verb to do it, to smell. So that's that's good too. Hana no no ga suki desu. But I got what you were saying. It's good stuff. Ano... Is, is psychology. Psychology. Okay, good. I'm a bit confused about how Genki teaches the mo particle. They say you need to add it when you use other particles in the second sentence. Do you have to add it to every particle or just one? I need an example for that. Because mo can be used in place of the wa ga and o particles you just cut them and add mo instead over top of them so like andy wa iku ando san mo iku right so you can just replace the wa there with mo to say that person is also going with ni and de you have to include ni and de you can't replace them because the direction is not understood by saying tokyo ni iku tokyo mo iku you can't say that tokyo ni mo iku you have to you have to use ni and mo. So that's the only things I know that might apply. But if you can give me a better an example sentence, that might help. I love how psychology is shindigaku. Science of the heart. Nihongo benkyo suru no ga suki. Nice. Are you a teacher in Japan? I am a teacher in Japan. I was a kindergarten teacher for about five years, just like regular kindergarten, a homeroom teacher. So I taught things like origami, going for walks, stuff like that. Um, all in English, but um, yeah, just a regular teacher. And now I, I quit that job and I, I took a part-time job teaching English like 40 hours a month so that I could focus on this a little bit more, which was a good decision. Very good decision for many, many reasons. Dina-san, boku mo rin, ano, shinri gaku wo benkyo suru no ga suki desu. Nice. As a kid, used to be happy when the Power Rangers were on the TV on Sundays. As an adult, I'm happy to see Andy. <laughs> Thank you, Jonography. I'm like, then I used, I used to love the Power Rangers too. I get to be a Japanese, Japanese Kamen Rider is what it's called in Japanese. Kamen Rider is Japanese for Power Rangers. Piano wo, hmm? 
how do you read this, Yuki? I don't actually know this one. I would, I think, kanaderu. Never seen that verb. Kanaderu no ga daisuki desu. Kanaderu te nani? Hikun じゃない piano. Piano wa hikun da yo ne. Piano wa hikun da ne. Kanaderu wa. Play at a performance. Kanaderu. Ah, I learned another new verb today. So, generally, if you're just talking about playing the piano in general, you're going to say, Hiku. Piano o hiku no ga ski des. Dai ski des. But if you're talking about playing at a performance in particular, is what I just learned. Play and perform. Oh, it's both. Kanaderu. Kanaderu. Ooh, to play an instrument, especially string instruments, so like a violin. Not a guitar. Guitar you hiku. Guitar is hiku. So to play an in string instruments like a, also like a standing bass or violin or cello or something is kanaderu. Okay. Piano is a string instrument, so it's also a percussion instrument. It's many different types, I guess. It works. Watashi wa sugaku o benkyo suru no ga suki desu. Nice. I like to study math. Heart, keep it up, says Pixelgon404. Thank you. I will do my best. Appreciate it. Piano o hiku no ga daisuki desu. Corrected the verb. I, but I think your other verb is okay. It's just I didn't know it. So that's just, that's, that's, um, that's a lack of understanding on my part. Not necessarily that your sentence was wrong. I think that cleared it up for me. Nice. I'm back. Mango yomu no ga suki desu. Nice. Thank you, Yuki and Andy, for all you do for us. I will talk to you guys on Discord later, guys. Join the Discord. We have a discussion about Japanese music and games, etc. that you can ask your, and you can ask your questions. Thank you, Walter. Thank you, always for all your good questions and support. And thank you for becoming a member, new people, new members, new, new Tokini sem Senpuki. Appreciate that. For those of you who are members or who are interested in creating things like emoji, we have an emoji or emoji in Japanese competition on the Discord for the new Tokini Andy um, exclusive emoji for using in chat. So even if you don't ever intend to become a member, your emoji could still become part of the membership. So check that out. I think Andy will be sleeping soon. I absolutely will. Cheers, Andy. Didn't know. Kagu. Ah, yeah, that's a good one. So that's a great takeaway for me tonight. Nice. Hana no nio yo kagu. Or nio, ne? Nio is also to smell. Thank you, Yugi. I just wish went to Jisho and looked it up. Nice. That's the best example I can think of at this time in the morning. <laughs> Fair enough. Man, high five to all you guys writing kanji on the phone. I have issues reading it. It's very tiny. I have a hard time reading kanji. Anything more complicated than like... That has probably more than like 12 strokes. Any kanji with more than 12, 10 strokes maybe even is really, really hard to see. Even on this 27 inch 1440p monitor. <laughs> Just because the chat's kind of small. Uh, I'm not on the phone. I'm old school. I'm a PC. K drama o miru no ga suki desu. K drama. Korean drama. Nice. Kankoku K drama ka na? Kankoku K drama. Demo K drama demo ii ka mo shin na yo. K pop mo yu ne. Nihongo de K drama o miru no ga suki desu. Nice. Tara likes K dramas. All right, guys. Good stuff. So, last but not least. Thumbs up o kogeki shite kudasai. Attack that thumbs up button, or as Dan likes to say, throw pizza at it. It looks like we've got 35 viewers and 45 likes, so I think we're good on that front. So just in case you haven't yet, channel toroku o onegai shimas. Channel toroku means subscribe. Onegai shimas is please channel toroku o onegai shimas, and please hit the bell next to it if you want to be notified when I go live. On other days, I might be doing uh, Tuesday streams again soon because I have a month off, so there's that. And next week is the question and answer for this. And all the Patreon videos are up for Lesson 8, so check those out if you're on the Patreon. And there's going to be more Yuki reading, graded readers over on the Patreon as well. So um, there's a link down in the description for those of you who don't know about the Patreon yet. You probably do. We talk about it all the time. And anything else? I think that's about it thank you guys for being here tonight i had a great stream i thought it was i thought it was fun sorry if i was confusing at certain times it's easier to try it on my phone than pc because windows is wonky agreed arigato andy says drone army thank you thanks for the stream says red Claw. thank you sensei arigato gozaimasu thank you lin i've had a lot of practice on the windows 10 ime lately 
See you in Sunday next week. You will see me Sunday next week. I will be here for the question and answer for Lesson 8. This Tuesday, I might... Maybe I'll play some... I really, really miss Yakuza 0. So maybe I'll continue that game if I can remember how to play it on Tuesday. We'll see. I've got a lot of catching up and lots of videos I want to make, so we'll see where I'm at at that point. But anyway, thank you guys for being here. Thank you to the new Tokini Andy Senpuki new patrons. Thank you, Lynn, our newest patron tonight. You will not be on the scroll out, unfortunately, because I haven't had time to add it, but I'll just thank you in person. And come hang out in the Discord. Join the MLG competition. And we'll see you next time. I think that's it. There's nothing else I want to say tonight, right? Yuki, you have anything to say? Daijoubu no. datte. <gasps> Shadowing with Ghost of Tsushima. That'd be cool, except I don't have a PS4. I don't have a PS4, so I can't play that. I don't think it's on PC yet, right? So instead, I'll be shadowing with Yakuza 0. There's other games I promised playing on stream, but it's been so long since I streamed that I, I think I just want to ease into it with some, some Japan-themed games. Sorry I'm so late. I got mandated at the hospital. It's okay. Thanks for joining. You made it. Sorry I'm so late. No worries. Not at all. I hope you, uh, you had an okay time at the hospital. It's not a great time to be at the hospital, I imagine. But, otsukare sama deshita is what I should say. Yuki says, otsukare sama deshita. Here you go. Otsukare sama deshita. Otsukare sama deshita. So that means you must be tired, but it also means good work and stuff like that. So anyway, everyone. To everyone, otsukare sama deshita. And, oh yeah, Yuki wants to mention, remember that if you join the Patreon this month, that means you're going to get one of these Ando-san themed, handmade by Yuki, pin badges in the mail from us no matter where you live in the world. So that's another reason to join the Patreon this month in particular. Because there's only, what, 11 days and 12 days? 12 days left to get in on that. And there will probably be more of those in the future. So that should be fun. So anyway, guys, have a great night. And we'll see you next time. And here's the rollout of the patron names. Thank you so much. On the Tokini Andy Patreon, we have listening and shadowing practice, Genki vocabulary practice, Genki textbook practice where Yuki, Ando, and I are your partners, eventually, even workbook practice. Uh, yeah, sure. After Genki 1, we'll be covering Genki 2, and eventually, even intermediate textbooks. Detailed grammar lessons and Japanese Q&As will, as always, be on the YouTube for free. Tokini Andy Patreon, live right now. Yoroshiku ne. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu.